Drakenheim is no more. Struck by a falling star, the city bathed in eldritch fire on that woeful eve. The tumultuous aftermath brought chaos, families torn asunder, and a kingdom shattered. Fifteen years later, monsters stalked the haunted streets of Drakenheim. Caught amidst rival factions struggling to rule the rubble, three unlikely partners venture forth into the crumbling city in search of riches, renown, and revenge. Good evening, and welcome to Drakenheim. This is the Dungeon Dudes Weekly Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition Livestream Campaign. My name is Monty Martin, running the game as Dungeon Master. And I'm Kelly McLaughlin, and I'm going to be playing Sebastian Crow, the half-elf shadow sorcerer. And we're joined today by our good friends... Jill Denitis, playing Veo Senya, the tabaxi gloom stalker ranger. And Joe O'Gorman, playing Pluto Jackson, the human battle master. Thank you so much for joining us again as we delve into the ruins of Drakenheim. So tonight's episode of Dungeons of Drakenheim is sponsored by Skull Splitter Dice. Uh, they sent us some fantastic collections of their premium metal dice to use in the game tonight. Um, Joe, what dice are you using tonight? Um, they're like a copper sort of, I don't know the name of them, but they're going to roll a bunch of crits. And that's what I am entirely banking on. So shiny. Yeah, so I hope shiny. so. So shiny. And if you'd like to get a set for yourself right now, head on over to SkullSplitterDice.com and be sure to use the discount code DDUDES at checkout to save 15% on your first order. When last we left our heroes, following their accord with the Hooded Lanterns, they have ventured across the city to the ruins of the Spokes the southern district of Drakenheim outside the main city walls. In its heyday, the spokes were the feeder district to the south ward, the industrial district of Drakenheim. All manner of trade, cobblestone streets, and taverns serving the working men and women of Drakenheim were the mark of this area of the city, the industry hub of Drakenheim. Our heroes have ventured down. What's what's behind us? Oh, our minis. <laughs> our minis are on the shelf behind us. Wonderful. Them. Let's grab them. <laughs> I was looking for Pluto. Of all the things, we had a bit of a rush start today, so there they are. There we go. Keep them. I we got to keep them on the shelf because when everything's moving around, they all get knocked around. Anyways, when last we left our heroes. They had ventured into Buckle Down Row, a notorious street of taverns and seedy establishments from the heyday of Drakenheim, which have become the nesting ground for the Queen's Men, the conglomeration of bandit gangs that had been scouring and plaguing the ruins for the past several weeks. Our heroes have ventured to Buckle Down Row with the goal of figuring out what the Queen of Thieves, the enigmatic leader of the Queen's Men, is up to. Because the commander of the Hooded Lanterns is a little bit concerned that if the Hooded Lanterns and the Silver Order were to strike out against Temple Gate or the Cathedral in order to retake a section of the city, that would be a prime opportunity for the Queen's Men to drop some form of sabotage which would stretch both the hooded lanterns and the silver order far too thin so our heroes now have come into a tavern which what used to be called the snake and mongoose adopting disguises once more <laughs> <laughs> they have posed themselves as new recruits and entered into a arena battle royale in the basement of the Snake and Mongoose, where they won a pretty flawless victory <laughs> thanks to Veo's shish kebabbing archery skills and Sebastian's hypnotic personality, and Pluto helped. I showed up. <laughs> <laughs> My name's Deb. <laughs> I was there. I stood there. No longer dubbed as fresh meat 
the crowd has gone wild with the bloody, bloody barbecue that you enacted in the arena sands. And Blackjack <laughs> Mel has applauded you and is giving out all the the winning bets, pays you your winnings from, from the takings. So I believe that ends up being about 100 gold pieces each that you win. Ooh. And so... So much tuna. The raucous drinking laughter and the unfortunate sight of stacking up some of the slain bodies of that massive bugbear and the other hobgoblin that were part of one of the other teams as several of the other queensmen and the various bandits down here start dragging the huge and heavy carcass of this bugbear who weighs about 400 pounds towards one of the doors of the in this circular arena again it's a circular room with three doors one is coming down from the set of stairs from up above and then two heading off to either side one is a door that you're not sure where it's go it goes no one's opened it or closed it yet but another goes back into a short hallway which seems to lead towards the sewers of drakenheim proper where they are dumping the carcasses of those who die in this arena in the midst of all the excitement, several of the other bandits, thieves, and killers are coming up to you all, slapping you on the back, saying, that was some amazing archery! Wow, how did you do that thing with the snakes and the eyes? And you are a very strong man. <laughs> <laughs> um, many are offering to buy you drinks. Yes. People are asking when you're going to fight again. And general excitement and raucousness. Bring me a pint of ale, men. Bring the champions all a pint of ale. My name's Knife Gut Pete. And uh, don't forget, I'm Vela, the human. If you didn't notice, I'm human. Uh, so human. So human. Um, so humans real. eat like bread, right? Bring me some bread <laughs> and some stew. <laughs> Okay. What does Pluto say? <laughs> of course. I'm 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 just trying to keep it together as <laughs> Bayo pulls the wool over their eyes <laughs> successfully. <laughs> Every once in a while I kinda reach up to like feel my head where you can't see the illusion, but like I just want to make sure my ears so are there. Just this. Very, I'm just yeah. doing this over my head. <laughs> totally human Natural thing human things. Blackjack Mel is this greasy looking guy he's about five foot four and he has hair that he's slicked back with pig's fat and he's wearing like this seedy jacket with some sort of pattern that he's stitched into it that lo that looks like it's supposed to be a motif of like playing cards or what you would see on a jack of clubs um and he's got like a bow tie as well as he but for being such a small man, he has this booming voice. And he cries out, All right, you all, get upstairs and bring down a cask of that special reserve for our champions tonight. And we'll get some bread and tell Stu to put on another pot. Yeah. Human food. <laughs> <laughs> There's someone named Stu and he makes stew? Of course. That's why we call him Stu. I like this place. <laughs> Keeps everything really focused. It's really easy to keep <laughs> track of. Yeah. So, what outfit y'all from? Says Blackjack Mel as the cask of this disgusting bathtub looking moonshine comes down the stairs and he starts pouring it out for all of you. This is real good stuff. Made it in a bathtub up in one of the manor houses we took over up in Uptown. It's real good stuff. I'm already drinking it. <laughs> it I'm, I take a big swig. I, before he even finishes talking, I'm like knocking it back. It tastes like paint thinner. Ah, it tastes like paint thinner. <laughs> I know, it's so good. I go to start <laughs> drinking it with like my tongue like a, like a cat would, but I'm like... Oh. <laughs> I, then I start like lifting it and I'm, I'm looking at you too like... Yeah. I, you're pouring it all over yourself too. All like this is the first time you've ever drank this way. 
This is all over. I'm just coloring so, my so, clothes. <laughs> and this is real. Savage. Like it. The way. All right. So, you lot, I have not seen someone come in here and just destroy like you three. I really think you've got some potential. Which outfit did you say you were with again? Uh, sorry, we're new and um, a little drunk. <laughs> and we literally just got hired a few days ago. I'm getting all the names mixed up. We went through a crash course on like all the different outfits. Which one are we in, Bella? The we- recruits. And I hold up my arm and show the the symbol that we have on. And I turn to the other two and say, right, guys? Yeah. Whose corpses did you take those off? The men who died that we replaced. <laughs> awesome. That's how we do things around here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because so, we so you got one. attacked by a bunch of our boys, decided to kill them, put on those armbands, and think that that makes you a member of uh, the Queen's Men? No, then we got recruited by Vela. And then we killed a bunch of you and in the basement. And who recruited you? I've never seen you around these parts before. Rusty Joe. <laughs> Make a deception check. <laughs> 22. Rusty Joe, but, oh, man, that would have only been a few days ago, yeah? Yeah, but a few days with the the thieves makes you blood, you know? Rusty Joe got impaled last week. It was awesome. I could show you his corpse. Amazing. It would be an ode to, to Rusty Joe to give him one last salute. He was a good recruiter, brought a lot of good folks, had an eye for talent, if you know what I mean. That's what we're doing here. So... Here's what I think. I think you all have some really nice potential. What are you here for? Anyways, what brings you into our little family? I've heard the queen is pretty cool, and uh, Vela recruited us, and she talked very highly. Have you even met the queen? You you were only hired like a week ago. Haven't had the honor, but, uh, you know, as uh, queens go, I heard she's pretty good. We want to meet the queen. Pay our respects. (laughs) You, You... you want to meet the queen. So you just show up here and you think that you're just going to meet the queen? No. Isn't that why we're killing people? So we can meet the queen? Oh, yeah, I thought champions got an honor. Now audience. you're thinking. Mm. Now you're thinking. You ra- raise yourself up through the ranks. Show yourselves good at killing things. You'll get your peace too. We got a good deal going on here. Queen, The queen knows talent when she sees it. Well, I mean, do you honestly have anything else to throw at us that's worse than eight? monsters hey i mean those were some good good people they weren't monsters they were people you killed them it was awesome but they were people not monsters sorry it makes me feel better when i call everybody i kill a monster fair enough i like to think of them all as kind of just like cattle you know what i mean helps that plus this paint thinner here really helps take off the guilt can i have more of that paint thinner here you go But I got to tell you, beats anything else. Out here, might be wild, might be crazy. You might never know who's going to stab you in the back. But one thing's important. We're free. You can do anything you want, be anybody you want in the Queen's Men. And no one's going to stop you. Not even the Queen. She keeps it fair. Got to give her the credit for that. What about the other pesky people roaming around Drakenheim? They ever stop you? You have to deal with any of them yet? Yeah, come, once or twice. Come across a couple of them rangers. Yeah. See, those people, those people, they only care about the laws when they benefit them. They just want to make this whole system, bring it all back so that they can control things so that we're on top and they rig the game to keep themselves up. Down here, we got rigged gambling tables, but at least you know what you're signing up for. But them, you don't even have a choice whether you want to play the game or not. You have to play their game, and if you don't like it, you're an outlaw. Yeah. Nailed it, guys. (laughs) So look, you want to fight some more? Will that that bring us to the... uh, Have you ever met the Queen? Of course I met the Queen. What do you take me for? 
I'm. Before you said, of course. I'm Blackjack you, Mel. You looked left and then right and then left again and then right again. And then you said, of course, while looking up and slightly to the left. Were you lying to me, Mel? Of course. I would never lie. All right. <laughs> can, I, can I check that? Uh, yeah. What's your insight bonus? Uh, my insight, my passive insight, uh, is 10. Um, he, uh, is he lying? With his shifty eyes and demeanor, you you can see right through this. But why he would be concealing this from you, it's up to you to decide. Well, Mel, <laughs> Blackjack, whatever you go by. BJ Mel. Yeah. Oh, I like it. BJ Mel. Well, if, you know, you haven't seen the queen, or maybe you have, maybe it's been a while. Who has seen the queen around here? Well, I mean, <laughs> you know, people come around. You got to be careful. She's got to be really careful. People come around here all the time asking, can they see the queen? And then it turns out they're hooded lanterns. So she got, she's got to play it safe. Once in a while, you know, I've seen the queen. I haven't met her personally, but I would say that I have a fair ring of connections to her. Okay. And I know that she's got a really awesome hideout somewhere around here. You don't know how to get there? No. I thought the queen's men all went and hung out in this awesome hideout I heard so much about. You're looking at it. This is our hideout right here. Like your group's hideout or the Queen's Men's hideout? So you're new, so I'll forgive you a little bit for your ignorance. This is our turf. All of us are Queen's Men. We all pay our little bit of peace to her. She keeps everything organized between all the different gangs. The Queen's Men are more than just one gang. There's, I mean, there's a whole bunch of us. We all got our own turf. We all got uh, got our own takes. We all got our own games that we play. It's the queen just keeps us all kind of working together. She's got a big plan behind it all. But she sends her people out to meet with us, not the other way around. I'm Deb. Hey, Deb. I mean, <laughs> Love that we do got there. this one joke, though. It's, it's real funny. It's, it's real funny. So, once in a while, we get people that come around here demanding to have an audience with the queen. Right. So, this is, this is the funny part. Right. So, we tell them which way to go. And it's true. It's no lie. It's the right way. At least as far as all of us know. But it takes you all the way through all of her traps call it the queen's passage and if you get past the queen's passage that's the way to the queen it's just littered with traps you just get to meet her it's like a hallway beats me all i know is that whenever the queen's people come they come that way they just know how to avoid the traps whether or not they got some sort of secret or some sort of other way but that's where they come from all we have to do is throw the bodies down that way to keep her crocs nice and fed Ah, so that, that pit that you've been throwing the bodies down, that's the Queen's Passage. Yeah. And that leads right to the Queen's Men, but everybody that goes down there dies because of the traps. Well, not all of them die. I've seen some people come back mauled horrifically, and once in a while, some of the higher-ups, the bosses, they do go down that way because that's where the Queen has her arena. She's got her big fights down there, all the really exciting stuff. But most of us, we don't get invited out that way. But Mel, I thought you were going to... If we win this and go to the Queen's Arena, aren't you taking us there? So I'll be honest with you. I can't take you directly there. But you stick with me, I'll be your manager. You know, we'll make it like 20%. I'll manage all your fights. I'll guarantee that after a couple good fights, you'll come out to the Queen's Eye and she'll invite you down there. I guarantee it. I just know it for sure. Oh, no. How long do we have on human veil? An hour. 
Probably not as much now. How long has it been? <laughs> How long has it been since our, our initial fight? Um, it has been about 40 minutes. You have 20 minutes? I have 20 beers left in order to <laughs> get through beers. until I turn, until I get cranky. Listen, Mel. We have to complete three to five really fantastic fights in the next 20 minutes. Or else I get cranky. Three to five fights in the next 20 minutes. Are you crazy? How am I supposed to set all that up? I don't know. I got to get you good contenders. We got to have top billing. Otherwise, the queen's never going to notice what you're doing. Like, you just want to fight a bunch of my boys. I mean, that's one thing. But if you actually want to get the queen's notice, we got to go after something really big. We got to hit the arenas at the other bars. You know, cause a bit of a ruckus. Make a bit of a scene. Get your name out there. I think we need to talk to the queen's men who are supposed to come show us where this final fight is. I don't know. Yeah, who do you who do you give the money to, old BJ Mel? Well, so us here, we're the purple petals. We all work under Mary Bedlam, and she comes out from the Queen. You know, once every couple of days, and we share our peace together. But all of us, you know, we share things. We don't have to pay a huge amount to the Queen. She's pretty fair about it. If we fight whatever bigger thing that you have in the next bar over in the arena do you think that will grant us an audience with the queen one more fight trust me you'll never see anything like the fresh meats fresh i mean meat. i can't yeah, what is our what i can arrange fresh meat? if we want to go to the slaughtered lamb or over to the one of the other bars get a good fight going we can see whoever's there and we'll take them on we'll take them down with your talent, I mean, you just turned that guy into a shish kebab. I don't know if that's going to be enough to get the queen's notice, but I mean, you cause it a good enough of a show, give the people what they want. Who knows? Shish kebabs are one thing, but we need to make, you know, some good drumsticks and maybe a rack of ribs out of this before the queen's men are going to notice us. I want to make someone a pin cushion. <laughs> I want to win a fight. <laughs> that's that's what I don't I want to see Deb's name in the in the sky. It just says. Are Deb. we losing ourselves in our undercover operation? <laughs> Pluto's trying to hold his tongue because, like, what Mel's saying makes like this free Drakenheim. Like, and I I I I've obeyed the law my whole life. Like, these are a bunch of like are you, wild. Are you going crazy now? Like this is. <sighs> like I just want to like be like. <laughs> this is your wild summer away from mom and dad. <laughs> like, there's rules, Mel. There's rules for a reason. There's a system in place. And the tower... Th but I can't say it. I have to be like, I'm Deb. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just old Deb. Can you get us into a fight in the next ten minutes? I'll see what I can do, but I doubt it. We're scrappy. Well... We might need Vela. Need Vela has to go on a mission. We might need a new recruit. <laughs> I mean, if you gotta go, the sewer's right over there. You can just let it go. Well, <laughs> I mean, but you said there were crocodiles and alligators down there. Yeah, but I mean, they're the bodies kind of float down the sewer for a little while, and then the crocs come and get them. It's safe enough, relatively, if you gotta, you know get nature's call going mm. i understand we got a little board across there with a hole cut in it it's kind of comfortable <laughs> <laughs> so classy mel it's fancier it's than a high class average. establishment what do you expect i need to talk to my manager oh wait is, is, is <laughs> <laughs> yeah he's no the, this one. Oh, our our I mean, um, I thought I was your manager <laughs> we're still thinking about we're it. working on that oh, deal mel, still thinking about it. this is gonna break your heart Fella like, was our manager. Yeah. I don't know. But you're, you're the muscle. You're the fighter. You're in the arena. You can't be the muscle. What happens if you die? I'm, I'm going to be the one that's going to replace you. I think I'm going to die. He thinks I'm going to die. <laughs> he thinks he's going to die. Oh. All right, I need I'm to... a strong human. I can survive anything you bring in the ring. <laughs> Listen, have a little bit more of this paint thinner. <laughs> like water. Think about it. And... I'm only asking for 20%. I can take you all to the top. 
let's discuss. Let's discuss. Private discussion. I understand. I understand. <clears throat> you don't have very much longer as a human, and um, I don't know. There's so what do we know? The other bars have fights going on, but there's a passage to the sewers here that leads to the Queen's passage that's full of traps. Yeah. Um, we could just go for it and sneak out of here before you turn back into a cat. I think if I turn back into a cat, they're going to just drag us down to the sewer anyways, but they're not guaranteed to take us all the way to the queen. So, you know, at least we know where to go. It's just knowing that it's dangerous. What do you think, Pluto? We could go to the bathroom and check it out and never come back and, and like, just see if it, if it's, if it's scary. And then if it's, if it is, we can come back and find a room and, fight our way to the top but this seems like a roundabout way what if we what if it takes us like days to to even maybe get an audience with the queen and who knows what do you think we're better at dealing with a passage full of traps or fighting our way through arenas i maybe have about two hours more left that i could be human but after that i'm gonna have to skedaddle to rest up a bit before i can do it again yeah but I think that's going to take more time waiting for Mel over here to set up these fights. Okay. We're going to tell Mel that we're going for the fights and that he can be our manager and to set the whole thing up. And we're going to go to the washroom and we'll be right back. <laughs> all right. Because all that paint thinner has made us all have to pee. Yeah. We all have to pee as a team. Yeah. It's part of our team building. Yeah. we. we it's we, core. We core shuffle concepts. over in a triangle because we don't want anyone to stab us in the back. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. All right. You're learning fast. So, what's the deal? All right, Mel. Pee. We all have to pee. That drink that you gave us goes right through. Yeah. It was right through. Right yeah. through. A little bit too much information. But what do you think of the deal? We'll take it, Mel. If you can set up a fight, that Fantastic. is. Fantastic. Here's here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna head over to the slaughtered lamb now. Do you want to fight tonight? Yeah. Awesome. I'm gonna go over, rustle up some of the scariest, scariest people you've ever seen, and you're going to fight them and kill them. You know what, Mel? You get all of the best and and most horrible Queen's men that there are to fight. Get them all in that bar. You get them all there. I know exactly who I'm talking about. There's a group of people that's already fought in front of the Queen before that are over at the slaughter, Slaughtered Lamb. I'm going to go talk to them. You're going to fight them. Cool. Oh, he's so excited. I, I love this, Mel. We'll be there. What time? What? I mean, when the few sun, hours? When the moon is where? Sun? Moon? I don't know. Get you in for the first fight of the night. As soon as the sun goes down, I know you can't see it in the city because it's always cloudy, but as soon as it's <laughs> dark out, you'll be the first fight of the night. Today's a little brighter. I'll it's true. Up. It is. I love this nice weather. <laughs> All right. We'll be there, Mel. Now we're going to go stand back to back in the sewer and go to the washroom. Yeah. I, I understand. I understand. You know, we... have Everyone's got to watch everyone else's backs and especially their own. Because if everyone is watching everyone else's backs, we'll all see it if someone stabs you in the back. Exactly. That's my motto. I keep it here in my pocket. It's at also all times. good for back rubs. Wow, you can read? Yeah. <laughs> it's a. Show, he's a show off. All the. Uh, yeah, I, I, I brag gut, about it a lot. Gut, just stab. What's your. What's... My name is. <laughs> gut. Gut. Knife Gut Pete. Yeah. Knife Nailed. Gut Pete, Vela, Deb, you're some folks. <laughs> See you soon, okay? All right. Triangle. Triangle. <laughs> so triangle formation. Give me over in triangle formation. <laughs> Ready to attack anything that comes. <laughs> okay. Uh, that's... Shimming over in triangle formation uh, towards the lavatories. The wonderful and welcoming smell of, uh, like, freshly churned up sewage hits your nostrils it's the smell of when relatively fresh water gets despoiled by garbage and waste because what you realize uh sebastian and veo is that this passage that the queensmen think is a sewer is actually one of the aquilifers of the, this area. So it's meant to bring fresh water into the city, not carry out sewage. 
Oh. Oops. <laughs> Good job, Queensman. Um, and so you can see the waste of like the corpses and, uh, well, human feces and other waste that from this board that they've put up. It's a rather ramshackle kind of outhouse. There's no privacy whatsoever. But they've also been throwing dead bodies. And as you walk over, um, there's this kind of hunched over guy that's been dragging the 400 pound body of the bugbear. He's like, wash him's over there. <laughs> and then it pushes the bugbear's body into the water with a splash. And it begins to like float as it heads down the line of the, of the water which the way that it's constructed is it's a passage with a stream in the center about 10 feet wide and perhaps about five feet deep. And you can see that there is water flowing in from the, the north and then it's carrying the water down towards the south and then around a bit of a bend where the bugbear's body is slowly dragging away. There's a walkway on either side. Of the of the aquifer. Before aquifer. we go down here, I think it's I, aquifer. Yeah. I probably need to take a health potion from that last battle. You got hit. Yeah. Well, yeah, everything attacked you. Yeah, oh, yeah that's yeah. true. You were surrounded. Yeah. yeah. So I'm just gonna. I was drinking wine on the sidelines. <laughs> Drink yeah. a potion of greater healing. For So we have a couple hours till sunset. Mm -hmm. That mean, just means we have to be back here. We might not want to get too... We don't have to be back here. We could just not show up for the fight. This is that's, true. That's also true. I Well... Because if I come back at that time, I'm going to be Man, attacked. I didn't want to let Mel down right there. <laughs> like, I really was really committed to my new life as Deb. <laughs> Pluto, I'm not going to lie to you, but I am going to lie to Mel. And I did, and that whole thing was just meant to get him out of our hair, so that we could sneak into the sewers. We're not, we're not going back. Your life as Deb is over. I'm, Who am I? I don't know, man. <laughs> You're Pluto. You're Pluto Jackson, Prince, Prince of, of Caspia. Caspia. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I am. Thanks, guys. I really got lost in that Deb character. <laughs> our best Shut friend. Up. Let's go. Oh, now we're in a sewer. <laughs> no, wait. We're not. Are we in the sewer yet? Or the guy just had to go to the washroom, right? Or like there's yeah. The you're lavatories. you're in now the aquifer. Um. Okay. Now I'm a pretty wise man. It, if if all this water is contaminated, like, wh what's the queen drinking? Like, what are they? What are these people? Probably like Aquafina. <laughs> uh, when we uh, when we rebuild Drakenheim, we're gonna have to give. Uh, we're gonna have to give the sewer or the sorry aquifer a very thorough cleaning. Like it's been yeah. it's been pooped and bodied in a lot. You know what though? Then we can work with the the fish people and uh, to clean the yeah the water yeah, system. They're gonna we be uh, they... they're like the janitors, and monsters for Drakenheim, they're the custodians <laughs> of uh, for yeah, they're they... part of our faction. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, other than contaminated water i guess uh get your handkerchief out <laughs> <laughs> well, that's normal smells <laughs> i'm used to this i guess we'll start heading down. like i mean let's take it slowly slowly and quietly mm -hmm. clunk 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 <laughs> clunk 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 i don't know who else is going to be down here though other than traps and uh, i mean if we see anybody we just say yo we're from the what did he say purple petals i think so I think yeah Purple petals. Yeah, yeah we're purple, purple petals. petals. So we're members of the purple petals. That's what he said. And we'll, if we run into any other queensmen, we'll just say that. And we say that we're um, we're trying to get to the queen because we wanna we wanna see the queen's arena. Mm. You know what? Maybe I might tie uh, a bandana around my face, as like pull up my scarf and my hood a little bit more just in case because I'm I've only got what probably fifteen minutes left on my mm -hmm. my spell, so I'm gonna be a cat either way. Um, you can be kind of shadowy. This is true. And I can hide in the shower. I, I can finally be loud because I'm in a place where I think it's okay to be loud. Mel really opened up my... I was like, I can be myself here. I can be loud and clunky and no one will say anything to me except you guys. Maybe you guys <laughs> might. <laughs> <All> <laughs> right. I was having an identity crisis. You um, wants to be Deb. 
You head down the aquifer's path as it gently, on a slight downward incline, moves deeper to the southwest. The, the whole time, just out of sight ahead of you, is the body of the bugbear being carried down the current. And it's... He's a landmark now. Yes, it is. After about 12 minutes of travel, there's a few other paths that it branches off onto that go out into smaller side passages, carrying water out in different directions, and a a few other connections here and there that bring it in from above. But the main, like, walkable path continues forward. Until you come to... um, Ahead of you, about 40 feet ahead of you as you look down the the pathway, the aquifer opens up into a larger cistern. It is roughly 60 feet wide, and the water comes into a circular path with, with a large pillar that's supporting the ceiling. And you can see that there are two more intersections that are that are all intersecting and from this distance it seems like one of them is carrying more fresh water in and then all these paths are connecting and then going out to the continuing to the south in this area there's a wider walkway around the circular path and you can see that the offshoots from the cistern though there's no walkways going out so it goes basically underwater and you can see that there's grates that have been put in front of the pathways from there but there are two large sealed storm doors here and you can see that there's a makeshift wooden bridge that has also been built across the cistern path as you come into the room the body of the bugbear hits kind of the bridge (laughs) and just kind of stops there where it looks like a bunch of other refuse has collected against the this wooden bridge that has been built in in place there i'm gonna poke him under cool um so just give him a good poke to try to get him under the bridge yeah so here's what we'll we'll do let's bring up our our map cam because we actually have this built um, and it looks so pretty. Yeah, you're 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 going to poke the bear. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be in the middle. Okay. Oh yeah, there's traps down here. <laughs> <laughs> so As you poke the bear. <laughs> so what you can see is that. going to be way more. Pluto, weird. as you come forward to the bridge to poke the bugbear's body, mm-hmm. I don't know with your hand or your sword or your stick. I'm gonna do it with a Jab. with my javelin. Okay. Um, you, you kind of poke it, um, and you can see that there are two doors, the one directly across from you and another door, another storm door here as well, but there are three large levers in this room, one right beside the door across from you. And then there's two other levers on the opposite end of the room at the opposite end of the cistern. Three levers, two doors, one body. Um, while he's poking the bug there, I start examining the water because I'm nervous about the rumored... Was it alligators? Crocodiles, alligators. Oh. Crocagators? In D&D, they're crocodiles. Alidiles. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> so many options. Uh, so I'm observing <laughs> so the water things. as he's poking cool. the bear to see if I see any movement. The refuse... Oh, yeah. The refuse that's collected here has made the surface of the water very murky and dirty. Um, So it's difficult to see, but you can give me a perception check. Skull splitter perception. 16. Looking down, you can see at the base that the, the wooden bridge under the water has a set of um, a so stick gate that is supporting the wooden bridge where a bunch of there's a bunch of netting underneath that is collecting all of these 
leftover body parts, but you can see that a hole has been torn in the netting. And there, while there's a lot of like refuse and garbage and bone, there's not a lot of flesh beyond the bugbear. And they've been using this corpse hole for a while. So hmm. this isn't good. Pluto, stop poking the bugbear. I, I go, oh, fine. I think uh, fine. I think we might have crocagators in, uh, in the water somewhere. Hmm. Keep your eyes peeled and your ears also peeled. Um, I see the door across from Pluto. Mm-hmm. Uh, as I move up to be closer to Pluto, kind of following him, what's it made out of? It is a storm door. It is made of metal. It looks like there's bits of wood that are reinforcing it, mm-hmm. but this door and the way that it holds in place, it looks like it has been it's been constructed um, by the looks of it, similar to those other storm doors that you encountered before in Drakenheim, that they are meant to seal shut in case of flooding. Mm. Um... No wood, though, that I can see that my grapple shot could get a hold of? There's a bit of wood buttressing the whole thing, okay. and then there's the lever right beside it as well. Okay. Um, so for the wood that's kind of around it, mm-hmm. I'm going to zip over with my grapple shot. Okay. <laughs> so that way I don't have to go across that uh, <laughs> the uh, wooden bridge. The bridge. <laughs> I don't trust rickety bridges that have been in sewers. Um, and I try to open the door. So the door has no handle. Oh, okay. Mm. Yeah. So I'm like... <laughs> the door has no handle. Um, this will not open. <laughs> try pushing. I push on the door. <laughs> you push against it. It must weigh a ton. Yep. Try pulling. <laughs> There's yeah. no handle. Yeah. I'm out of ideas. I Go under it. it there, a little bit. <laughs> this, the door itself... So you scratch it a little bit. Um, and... There's some scratch marks in in the the wood and metal of, of the door. The other door on the opposite side is of identical construction. Hmm. Um, but then there's the the three levers as well, and the whole cistern itself. So I'm gonna should I pull the lever? I'm gonna move up. And what if we pull all the levers at the same time? I was gonna say that. Oh really? Oh, yeah. Good idea. Same brain. Oh, was I supposed to say that at the same time as you? <laughs> Try no. again. No. Oh. <laughs> um, Were you actually going to say it? I was I was thinking it. Well, the worry that is, I think one of the... I, I think if I had to guess, because I am guessing, because I can't know. Is that that logic? Okay. One of them might empty the water, and then the other two might open the doors. Or one of them's a trap. Or, they're all a trap. Or, okay, you can keep going forever. Like, one of them could make jelly beans. I don't know. We, we have no idea. You think? There's no such thing as a lever that you pull that makes jelly beans. Yeah, that's insane. You're insane. Yeah. I'm sorry. Come on, it was knife. a dumb idea. <laughs> no, come on, knife get Pete. Um, get your I, head in the game. I'm, uh, okay, I'm in the game. Um, I'm going to keep my eyes on the water. What do you guys think about the levers? So if I went over and grabbed one and you you could mage hand one. True. Do you want to ma- mage hand the one that's that uh. you'd have to jump over the water for? Yeah. Yeah. So Pluto maybe go around to the one near the other door. So I'm going to shimmy my way over. Cool. And how how um how wide is the gap between the two? It's just, is it 10 feet? Like Rough, the bridge? Roughly? Yeah. The 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 gap is about 10 feet. And how deep could we say the water is. Can we see the bottom? The water is about ten feet deep here. Mm-hmm. Can you As make you water come go up, away? Um, <laughs> yeah. Oh, you, you can all. It, it's murky <laughs> water, but with careful inspection, you may be able to see the bottom. <laughs> I get down on all fours. Can you see the bottom? <laughs> no, no, no. Um, I'm even wondering if there's anything inscribed here that might give a hint about which levers. If I know anything about Thieves Cant is that I can't read it. <laughs> but I can. I can go look for it and see if I can find scribbles. Yeah. I'm looking for scribbles. Cool. Where? 
uh, on my way to the lever. Okay. As you head towards the lever, give me a pers- uh, give me an investigation check. Or perception. Yeah. Twenty-three. Okay. You don't see scribbles, but fruitless on the floor in front of you. There is what looks like to be a clear. It's like a hairline, but it's a raised step <gasps> in the flagstone in front of you. I stop immediately, and I do one of those crouching poses Mm -hmm. and then i uh okay we got a we got a problem why it's one of those uh is it look like it's cleaner than the other ones or it's dirtier than the other ones but it's obviously raised yep it's a it's a hairline break in the flagstones that's raised by maybe like a millimeter how close am i to stepping on it you were looking carefully as you were moving forward so you're just one step away from it. Okay. Is there other ones like it? There could be, but based on how you detected it, you would need to be this close to it before you even saw it. Ooh, what if I did, if I took my javelin and I just kind of like, kind of sweep it back and forth, like not pressing down on it, but to mm-hmm. feel for like the raises, the bumps and the... Yeah, you... Feeling with your javelin, it's one flagstone that sits flush from the edge of the water to the wall. So it takes up the whole... Yeah. That's how they get you. Are you you telling us about what you found? Are you just like on the ground? Like (laughs) Yeah, I'm not saying anything. I'm just like (laughs) feeling around really intently. How's getting to that lever going? Did you find the script? I've already (laughs) cast Mage Hand and it's floating over. It looks it looks like I uh, What's the range on your I lost my glasses. Or or not Calyx. Sebastian. Calyx, your monk. We were playing our (laughs) other campaign. Jeez. Uh range is thirty feet. Okay. So probably to come over. Can I make it across the... Can I make it over it? How? Can I... Is it... How wide is it? I know it goes... Uh, the, the whole... From the water to it the It is thing. at least five feet wide. Okay. The stone? The danger zone. Yeah. How Um. Okay, so I'm going to tell... Okay, guys. There's a raised thing here. I think I found trap number one. Uh... What did you, what does it look like? It looks like all the other stones. Isn't that freaky? Could I be stepping on a trap right now? Probably. Ooh. And I start <laughs> to like look closely at the ground around me. Do I see any stones that are Look for raised stones. Make raised. a perception check. Twenty one. You don't see anything of the nature that he's described. Okay. I, I don't need, see anything like that over here. I need to move closer to, for my mage hand to reach that lever. I, I think I got across this bridge. Um. Hmm. <laughs> eh, what's the worst that could happen? No. <laughs> I step onto the bridge. Okay. You step onto the bridge. I examine the bridge. It is rather rickety. I like how you examine it after you step, I on. step on it, then examine it. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing happens. Not I, yet, no. I um Wait what? I like What was that last comment? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like, Smash it, get off that bridge. I like do that kind of like quick tiptoe where like okay. I'm trying to be gentle, but I'm also kind of running and I run over to the other side. Oh, like in three ninjas strike back. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> just like that. Okay. Cool. You've crossed the bridge. As you cross the bridge, you see that the it's like the water kind of goes up. It's not very sturdy, and it causes ripples all through the water. Yeah. Oh, no. Um, looking at the ground very carefully with each step, I move. That should get me. Okay. There. Give me a perception check. 16. Okay. It seems fine. 
as you look across, as you look forward. But when you step where you just stepped, it's not fine. And the you feel the flagstone that you just step on sink by an inch with a grinding sound. And then all of a sudden, on the wall opposite you, as it sinks down, a piece of flagstone in the wall sinks down as well, revealing a nozzle. Guys, there's a nozzle. And then all of a sudden, there is a click, click, like someone's lighting a match. Guys, there's an incident here. What are you gonna, What are you gonna do? Oh, no. It's all I, happening so slowly, and you're just narrating it. Yeah, <laughs> there's I, a nozzle. <laughs> I I'm gonna barrel roll forward. Okay, so as you barrel roll forward, a burst of flame fires out from the wall. <laughs> um, it's like a gasoline fire. It's like blue, white, hot, and red as, as, as it licks the, licks the tips. You can give me a dexterity saving throw. If you want to roll into the water, I'll give you advantage on your saving throw. Yep. <laughs> yes, Remember when I... he said not yet? <laughs> 17. Okay, that's a successful save, but you still take... <laughs> uh, you still take 11 points of fire damage, oh. and you land in the water enough um. to see a very <laughs> large crocodile in front of you. <laughs> As I emerge from the water, I yell, Crocagator! Oh man, it's big! Is it like right in front of me? Is it the, staring at him? <laughs> it's in the water. This is basically you kind of look up, and there it is. <laughs> Roll for initiative. What did you find? <laughs> oh, nothing. You don't even have eyebrows to singe right now, do you? <laughs> no, they're they're growing back. <laughs> well, now they're probably gone again. <laughs> I get good it is a gigantic, horrifically mutated crocodile because you can see that there are bits and flecks of delirium that have embedded in its flesh and it looks like underneath its reptilian scales it looks like almost its scales are buckling to accommodate its gigantic growth in size like somehow the outer reptilian scales of the crocodile haven't grown fast enough to accommodate the increased muscle mass and it's almost in parts of its back, it's almost like there are tumorous growths growing off of it. Hmm. Cool. Classic Sebastian. <laughs> Classic incident. There's an incident happening. What do we got for initiative? 26. 26 for Veo. 7. 7 for Sebastian. And 13 for Pluto. I, ro I rolled a crit on my <laughs> initiative. Gross. You know, I was thinking for... Wait, for there's, that, there's other things on that list there. <laughs> yeah, there are, because this is when... Uh, Mercury. Pluto, Water. you notice... Hey, I noticed something. Swimming up from the other passage are coming two more smaller crocodiles. From here? We yes, got company! But, but put them out off the map, yeah. They're swimming up, but Pluto can see them uh, see as they surface up in the water coming forward. Alrighty. Top of the round. Alright. Veo. Veo, I need help. <laughs> I, and I see this giant croc in the yeah. water. Uh, I take my bow and I'm like, Sebastian, I'll get you out of this incident. And I start to take some shots. Cool. So the crocodile is in the water um, and it's under, it, it is under the water. So I am going to give it cover, but you ignore that because you're a sharpshooter. Do you, do you ignore that? With I ignore half and three yeah. quarters. Okay. So you do ignore that. Sure. 
Yes, yes, I do. Okay. Okay. Uh, and I bonus action Zephyr Strike to get some advantage uh, on this as well. First attack with my longbow. Oh. <laughs> um. <laughs> Oh no! <laughs> what was that uh, quiver? <laughs> that, that, oh. <laughs> I'm flailing in the water. Uh, Eleven. The arrows sing through the surface of the water, but completely miss the crocodile. Yeah, you know when you try to fire something in the water and it like refracts, <laughs> and I'm like, oh, I need to move over a little bit. No, Veo, shoot it, not the water. <laughs> the crocodile. I, I take another shot at it. Kill the water. <laughs> no, uh, seven. <laughs> it's okay, it's okay. And my last shot. Bless the dice. Oh no, nope. still worse. Than How the one. tables turn. <laughs> so Veo fires. So in a panic, Veo turns, sees the fire, sees Sebastian roll over as this crocodile, and notices the crocodile in the water now. And you just fire out a whole bunch of shots, and they sing through the water. And Sebastian, under the water, you can see like the arrows shooting and whistling past you underwater but they completely missed the crocodile. That was a warning shot. <laughs> <laughs> Three times. Pluto, you're up. Um, I was reading about long jumps, and it says that I could, if I run for 10 feet, I can jump my strength score in feet. Mm -hmm. I can jump 20 feet? Yes. I do that. Okay, so <laughs> you cycle back and And I forward. run, and I'm going to jump over the, the thing. Okay. And I'm gonna. Tr I, I want to just get to 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 old Sebastian here and just pull him out of the water. Okay. Can I get to him without getting covered in fire? Is the fire still going? Y the fire has stopped. Um, and the the whole system has closed up. But you will have to step on the stone to reach him out of the water. I do that. Okay. Does it? Has it recharged? Yes, it has. <laughs> <laughs> so as you step there, the fire fires out once again as you try to lift Sebastian so out of the water. Him. I'm going to grab him with my one arm, and I'm going to hold the shield up in a vain attempt to block the <laughs> nice. fire coming out. Okay. And I'm just going to just, I want to just grab him and do like, like as you would handle a child with like a life jacket, just grab his like collar and just pull him and throw him <laughs> backwards. Okay. So first, give me an athletics check to grab Sebastian and throw him out. I want to question what children you're throwing with life jackets. Like a child, you grab them and... 23. <laughs> okay, so you grab Sebastian under the water and throw him out onto the ground behind you. <laughs> okay, so now... Something like that. <laughs> you're holding your shield up. If you take disadvantage on your saving throw, you will be able to protect, protect Sebastian from the flames as you pull him out. I accept. Okay. My hero. Uh, uh, what's a deck save? Yeah. I got a 16 and a 20, so I got 17 and 21. So, miraculously, though you sh you're sh using the shield to try to shield yourself and Sebastian at the same time, so it's really difficult, but you manage to wriggle your body around and pull it back blocking most of the flames with the shield still some of them lick around the the flames so sebastian you can make a dexterity saving throw with advantage against it because he took disadvantage i got a 17 and because he's shielding you i'm going to say that you take no damage on a successful save Woo. uh Paluto, though, you still end up taking 10 fire damage it's uh it's warm it's a, uh, it's a little hot, but I take it. Okay. You just saved my life. And then uh, I'm gonna. Do I have any more movement? You've used all your movement, and that was your action. And I'm standing on the fire. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm yep. done. <laughs> That's my turn. Okay. Next up is the giant croc. It lurches forward. As you throw Sebastian out of the way, the crocodile lurches forward towards you, Paluto. Um, and as it comes around, it tries to sweep your leg with its tail. Oh, and that's my move. <laughs> Getting a 26 to hit. Oh, yeah, baby. 
<laughs> you take 17 points of bludgeoning damage, and I need a strength saving throw, or you're going to be knocked prone. Uh, 17? You're good. You needed 16 was what you were looking for. However, the crocodile, uh, d- without sweeping your leg, it comes up to grab you in a vice grip with its mouth. Uh-oh. Oop, that's cock die. Getting a critical hit. I don't take crits, but still hits. <laughs> I, I don't take those here. <laughs> <laughs> we don't accept crits. We don't. Ex- this- sorry, sir, but your crits are no good here. <laughs> you just have to take it. Get out. So as the vicious jawbite comes down, were you not wearing the armor made of the adamantium Balance. meteoric iron made by Tobias Crow? You would probably be missing your most of you. <laughs> I love that part of me. The most of me. Ah, my most of me. Um, That's what makes me me. I'm already having enough of an identity crisis. <laughs> if this crocodile eats me, I don't know who I am. Regardless, you still take 26 points of piercing damage, and you are grabbed by the crocodile. Ow. And then we're going to make an opposed strength check because it's going to try to pull you in the water. <laughs> but I'm super strong. I'm Caspian strong. Caspian strong. Uh, I got a 22. I got a 15. So it tries to pull uh... you in, but you grit your teeth into the pressure plate. <laughs> I'll, if I just stand here. <laughs> yep. Cool. Sebastian, Ow. you're up. <laughs> oh, boy. Um, <clears throat> all right. Yeah, I think this is happening. Okay, so I'm, I've am i just been pulled out of the water. I'm heaving and soaked on the sidelines here, and I look up just to see this alligator biting <laughs> down on Pluto who is getting flames burst at him. And I stand up and start kind of looking at the whole scene, and I get really angry. <laughs> and I'm like, no, you leave Pluto alone. And then all of a sudden, I kind of hunch over, and I'm like, I don't, I don't feel good. And then my skin explodes, and a shadowy ape appears. Ooh, Ooh you are polymorphing yourself into a giant ape. Yeah, only cool. the ape kind of explodes out of my skin as this shadowy giant ape with Look red eyes, stuff. and it's just purely made of like shadow and evil essence. There's Sebastian skin yeah it's, this, no the skin just like you don't even see it anywhere it's oh, just okay. gone it's not like, a ah! not a true giant ape mini but it's pretty close pretty close it, wor- we'll, it works we'll work. yeah it works with it so it's sebastian's imposing. form just monstrously explodes out uh as he transforms himself into a horrific beast um although one of, of relatively still animal intelligence although you're half as smart as you be you're fine though um that's your action to polymorph correct yeah okay Anything else you want to do with your turn? Um, the confused ape Bastion um, just pounds his chest and roars <laughs> at the <laughs> alligator. Okay. Seb- yeah, I'm trying to. Yeah, okay. Ape Bastion. Ape. ape Seb- yeah. Sebastian Sir- ape. Sir. <laughs> ape. Bastion. I think it's just ape Bastion. Ape Bastion. Ape Bastion. Yeah, I'm trying okay. to turn hard here. <laughs> Alrighty. Thanks. Next up are the tiny crocs. They're going to swim forward around the long way. Uh, yeah. How far can they? they they're going to have to dash swim uh, towards the giant ape. But then two more crocs. Uh-oh. Oh, they are on the other side of the bridge. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Swim up this way and begin climbing up onto the platform. That is the little baby crocs. We go to top with Veo. Okay. So I see this giant ape burst out in front of me. Not sure what happened to my friend there. <laughs> um, Pluto, you're going to give me my croc. Um, I turn into yeah, these pretty crocs. Bloodied. And I start to freak out a little bit. <laughs> and I activate my and agility <laughs> coupled with my <laughs> Zephyr Strike and I start to run 
towards the opposite side. I, can probably, I think I can get like 90 feet. <laughs> you, want it, you want to go all 90? I'll go 90, yeah. Okay. And then I take my longbow out and I start shooting the little crocs in the butt. Okay, so you run to the that that side. In the process, Gosh. <laughs> you step on the uh, on the pressure plate. Oh man! Um, and the little crocs. Um, are you have Zephyr strike up? Yeah. So you don't provoke opportunity attacks. No. Okay, they would try to snap at you, but the pressure plate does go off, <laughs> and a gout of flame <laughs> fires out towards <laughs> you as well. <laughs> um, make a dexterity saving throw. Yeah, that works. Nine. So that's a failure by five or more. <laughs> and the explosion of flame deals <laughs> 27 points of fire damage. That's just like you need by a crack. And because it's such a powerful blast of flame, it's actually concussive. And it blasts Ooh. you towards the water. So you can make one last ditch dexterity saving throw with this advantage to catch yourself before you are thrown into the water. Uh, tw uh, 12? You are pushed into the water. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> With a splash. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> now what would you like to do? Um, I'm going to crawl back up <laughs> onto the <laughs> sopping wet. <laughs> um, can you make a concentration check for Zephyr Strike, please? Yes. You've got to make a DC uh, 14 with the damage that you took. I rolled a 15. Okay, so it's still in effect. Okay, so, so you're able to climb out. Zephyr Strike's still in effect, so you don't provoke opportunity attacks from the crocs. <laughs> so how much movement did I have? Uh, I'm going to say that climbing out yep. is going to cost um, at least 15 feet of movement. Okay. Fifteen. I still have... Use about 40 to get there. Yeah. And then 15 there, so that's like 55-ish. So I think I still have about 40 left. <laughs> Can I then... <laughs> um... <laughs> he ran across the map, got knocked in the water. I still have like 40. I have moved 30 feet. <laughs> it's just like... Like, have you ever seen, though, what happens to a cat when it freaks out and you try to push it in a bathtub? Like, they just go oh yeah yeah <laughs> i always picture like you're like you were like finale and like you fell into the water and it startled you and yeah like, like those videos like when the cat's like trying to run it jumps it wipes out and then runs away <laughs> even faster <laughs> faster than it did so i do i know now where the spot is uh because you, the gout? you do okay you do i want to <laughs> not climb up there <laughs> not climb up there but also just like Hop and roll over it as far as I can go. Okay. Um, so I probably can't go another 40 feet, but at least I can get past the flames. Okay. And now I'm stopping wet being like, <laughs> I hate sewers. <laughs> still get like there. Yeah. If you wanted to. Okay. And I lean up against the wall like, Ugh. <laughs> That's my turn. <laughs> You ran so far. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else, man? Okay. Pluto, you're up. Um, He still got me in his mouth? Or did I resist? Am I like... He's got you. He's got you in the grab. Yeah. Uh-oh. Yep. And you are standing on that pressure plate. And is it still, like, firing fire at me? Uh, It isn't. Is it like a? Um, but is it like a? Burst? Since you're still standing on it, it hasn't re. It now hasn't reset. Okay. <laughs> oh. um, I'm just gonna start swinging at the croc. Because uh, that's what heroes do. Okay. Well, I. Yeah, I'm gonna. I'm just gonna reach behind me, pull out my sword, and then just in one motion. Uh, nineteen. That is a hit for. 15 damage. Oh, wow. Again, uh, like 24 for 
uh, 11 damage. And then I'm going to do Distracting Strike. <laughs> And do another uh, eight damage. Okay. And the next attack against him has advantage. And then I'm going to action surge and just keep swinging. <laughs> nice. Uh, 25 for nine damage. Wow. And yeah, like a 22 for 15 damage. That leaves the croc bloodied. So with a flurry, just driving your your javelin, uh, sword, your sword, just driving the blade down on it, you sear ch- uh, like uh, almost ripping away sheets of its scales, and you, like you hit one of the tumors on its back, and it just explodes into pus, uh, and the creature howls and bites down deeper on, on you as you do so, um, and with. You're able to take the bite and pull it into the path of the next attack coming at it. And then the last uh, on my last attack, I'm gonna do a uh, trip attack. Okay. I, I I don't know if he can be prone. He can be knocked prone. Oh well, then I do that. And uh, he's gonna take another six damage. Okay. And then he has to make a strength save. I get a natural one, so he is knocked prone. Does he let me go? He doesn't let you go. Uh oh. You, like you, <laughs> you've kind of knocked him against the side, but just because he's prone doesn't mean he, it breaks his the grip of his jaws. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and then I'm going to uh, use a bonus action and heal myself a little Second bit. Second wind? Yeah. Cool. Alrighty. So next up is the giant croc. The croc writes itself and thrashes at you. First, I've earned this. Trying to Slam you with its tail, getting a 26 to hit. This croc means distance. It has hit so hard each time. <laughs> yeah. Um, slamming you with its tail for 18 points of damage. And I need a strength saving throw or else you get knocked prone. So, you know how the... I, is it crocodiles or alligators that do like the alligator roll thing? I don't know. Is it alligators? They both do it. Thank you, Kyle. Um, so y- it gets knocked over, and it tries to do that whole, like, roll with its prey no! thing. Make a strength saving throw. No! Uh, 17. It rolls over, rolls back, but you don't go down. Nevertheless, it still drives its teeth in like a vice grip getting a um, 24 to hit. That hits me. Wow. Uh, For 28 points of damage. (laughs) I'm super down. (laughs) Are you down? Oh, yeah. I I had four health. Okay. Oh, no. 28. He hits So since you've gone down, it's still got you in his his jaws. (laughs) And Sebastian, you see it pull Pluto down <laughs> un- underwater. And I'm just, I, I, as I'm thrashing it with my sword, it's just pulling me into the water. And you just see me like stop <laughs> swinging. Stop <laughs> swinging. So it's my turn now? Yep. So Ape Bastion, seeing Pluto get dragged into the water and going limp, uh, glug, 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 glug. lets out a huge roar and reaches into the water and grabs the alligator by the jaw. And I mean, I'm going to I'm going to use my punch attack, but I'm just imagining Kay. that I reach in and I just grab him. You say that because you're elevated over it, I'm going to give you advantage on your attack roll. Oh, baby. Actually, and you have advantage because Pluto's distracting strike is still in place. So I get <gasps> super advantage. Yeah. Does my elven accuracy still apply? No, because you're you're uh, an ape. But you're deep no down inside, enough. I'm an elf. <laughs> not it's half elf. Uh, and even deeper, your knife yeah. get peed. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, I get a 19 to hit. That hits. And so I grab it by the jaw and start trying to rip its head off. Oh, yeah. That's a head ripping move. 23. Oh. 29 damage. Wow. It's still alive. <laughs> oh, my. But ba- 
So you punch it in the back and you hear this loud crack as a bunch of its ribs break. Um, and just parts of its scales burst out, sending blood all through the water. I get it, like, under my arm, and I start trying to, like, pry its mouth open off of dying Pluto. Okay. <laughs> Do I still have advantage? Yep. <gasps> oh, uh, Yeah, baby. that's a 19 plus 9. It's nice. Um, oh, for... Oh, 19... Uh, 25 more damage. <laughs> So your second punch, you punch it the first time, sending your other your fist into it. You punch it a second time and just rip it in half. Yeah! And these bits of giant croc go flying all through the water, and Pluto, with the <laughs> croc's jaw still attached to him, floats to the surface. Can I, as like a, would it, would it, would it be a free action? Can I like grab Pluto with my big ape arms and like just cradle him? To grab him? him, you're going to need to take an action. You could move into the water to interpose yourself between him and the, the other crocs, though. I do. I, okay. like, put myself in there. Cool. With <laughs> with little Pluto. Well, cool. you can pull the flames away for now because they're not going. Uh, and you're able to move in the water such that you don't have to. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much, a Bas- a- 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 Nice. Ape a- 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 Bastion. Ape a- Bastion. Uh, the ceiling here is about 15 feet high. So... As an as a giant ape, you really got to stoop. Well, now I'm in the water, so now yeah, I'm now you're fine. Okay, yeah, I'm good. <laughs> it's just up to like your waist. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> cool. Uh, so that was cool. Uh, that was Sebastian. So now my little tiny croc. So they have a movement speed of thirty feet. So they're gonna swim up to Veo. Rolls two. Because they landed beside her, so they're gonna swim right up to her. The other two are going to swim up to Ape Bastion. Ape hey, Bastion, he's their man. Cool. And two of the crocodiles are going to bite Ape Bastion, getting an 11 and a 20 to hit. The 20 hits. <laughs> um, and that is going to be uh, 10 piercing damage. And I'm going to say that it technically does grapple you and it's biting onto your leg, but you're way too big for it to actually grab you. The other two smaller crocs go for Veo, getting a 19 and a 20. Yep. Is it grappling me? Or are you kind of grappling it's kind of just stuck on me. It's like. It's so, like Veo, one of that's going to be dogs. 22 points of damage as the two crocs oh, leap geez. up out of the water yeah. and go for your legs, and you're grabbed by both of them. Oh, and no. they're pulling yeah, not you, okay. and they can't quite agree who's going to get you and who's not. Uh oh. Ouch. Okay. Okay, we go to the top of the round with Veo. So they're grappling me? Yep. All right, I want to try to gra- get out of this grapple. What are you going to roll? And I need a concentration check for Polymorph. Oh, do you want me to do a perception check? Yeah. I got 20. You're good. You're good. Nice. Um, What it's do I roll to get out of the strength? Uh. Y- you yes, can use acrobatics you. as opposed to their That's strength meaty. checks. Oh, yeah. That's We're going to use that, definitely. 20. So you got to make two. Oh. So you beat one, and you definitely beat the other. Because I get a, my first roll, I got, a, tw- I got a, a 19, and my second roll, I got a natural one. Oh, okay. So because I got a, a nine on the first. So it's your action. You managed to break out of both nice. of their grips. Mm-hmm. Now what are you going to do? Uh, I'm going to... Cast another Zephyr Strike. I need some extra movement here. <laughs> um, and uh, don't you, aren't you under the effects of it already? Yes, but the movement only does one. So if I want to do the movement, I one, see. Yeah. Um, so to get that extra thirty feet, I cast it. Okay. Again, and I hop over the croc. <laughs> hop the croc. And keep running around to the corner. Avoiding the trap this time. Uh, c- can I jump over it? Yeah. Yep. Kind of do a barrel roll. Yep. <laughs> And end on the corner, and I'm like, okay, well, I'm back. What's happening? <laughs> and I see the two crocs just on this giant ape. I'm like, well, that's not much better. <laughs> and I'm somewhere under the water. Yeah. I'm just laying in the water. Speaking of which, <gasps> death saving throw. Do I get any bonuses? Do What's, you? Uh, what is it? Is it a con or no? It's just a straight up saving throw. <gasps> a nine. 
That's one failed death save. So don't roll a one next turn or I'm you're coming, dead. I'm coming. I'm coming. So that's my first one, right? Yeah. I okay. I lay there. Okay. Uh, so the Pluto, the giant croc is dead. Yes. Sebastian, you're up. Um, I'm going to grab the crocodile that's on my leg. Mm -hmm. And here's how I want to describe it. And you tell me if I just make two standard attacks or if there's something else. I would love to grab the, the crocodile that's biting my leg lift him up, and smash the other crocodile with him. Okay, let's resolve this in order. So grab the first crocodile and make your attack. Making just yep. a fist attack? Yep. Twenty-three. That hits. Give me the damage. So you go down to sweep up this crocodile and smash it into the other with your fist and roll the attack against the other croc. Crit. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, now what we're going to do is I'm going to have you roll the damage, and then I'm going to describe to you what happens. So uh, roll like the damage. For all three attacks? For for or the just... first for the first attack? First attack is... 18. Okay. Nice. So, and the other one? The crit. So that's 14, 15, 16, 17... Thirty-three plus six, thirty-nine. So both attacks individually kill the crocs, but what, what what's going to happen is you you reach down, grab the first one by the tail, rip it up, smash it into the other, and they both break apart in a shower of gore <laughs> as you smash them against the walls, and crocodile parts go everywhere. Ape bash, ape bashed and lets out another mighty roar and pounds his chest. Nice. Uh, uh. That's the roar nice. of a ape Alrighty. bastion. Bah, bah. The little tiny crocs. Um, they swim to one swims towards Veo. The other, I don't think, has enough movement to get towards Veo and, and get her. It attacks. Oh, it's cock. It's Getting like a ten thing. to hit. So it leaps out of the water. Actually, uh, yeah, it has to dive back in, go for you, and it uh, it comes out of the water. As it does so, though, to come and attack you, it hits the pressure plate. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and it fails at saving throw. Mm. Cooked croc. Fire burns. And it gets cooked. <laughs> does it die? <laughs> yeah. Okay, so we have dinner tonight. Yeah. The other croc swims forward. Um, and I'm going to say this, this other croc, seeing what's happening, it's going to slither off and flee. So, Veo, if you have a healing potion on you, you can definitely get up to Pluto and recover him. The, uh, the other uh, crocodile is going to run. Oh, okay. Because I totally forgot that I can bonus action, uh, cunning action, and dash. <laughs> so I can get even further. <laughs> that was a bonus action now. So I was going to dash over to Pluto, and I use my healer's kit. Oh. Um, so that way I don't have to use a potion. Because uh, I have six uses now left on it. Wow. Does, can A. Bastion reach the crocodile trying to flee? Or does he get away? Um, yeah, A. Bastion could. Yeah. He runs up and rips it in half. <laughs> nice. <laughs> okay, with that, what are all y'all going to do? Do you, you want to take a short rest? I'm going to lay here. Because I can use a minute. rope trick to get us out of the sewer to oh, take yeah, a, we can an just, hour long rest. We can just kind of chill for a <laughs> do bit. Want to I don't Are mind you guys just resting while I'm like that. walking around in this pool as a giant ape for a while? I'm like splashing and stuff. Not on the pressure plate that is probably right beside me, but I'm leaning against the wall after like healing Pluto, just being sopping wet and like. <sighs> eventually, Thanks, Mayo. <laughs> Thanks for saving me, guys. Eventually, I turn back into uh, Sebastian, and I feel weird about what just happened. See. Now, do your clothes like rip, or is it is it like the Hulk, or is it like, um, like it, it, is your, does everything like kind of morph into more the like action? Shazam? Yeah, it's kind of oh, like Shaz cool, cool. yeah, Shazam nice. into a shadow ape, and then, but like it looks violent, like it looks like the ape explodes out of me, but then when it turns back, it's just like an awkwardly frail looking Sebastian who looks just tired. 
I almost picture like black flames that kind of come around, shadowy, yeah. smokiness. Yeah. Nice. And now I'm sitting on the edge and I'm just like, guys, I, that was weird. What happened? I don't know. Yeah. I got really scared that you were going to die. And then everything was kind of just a haze of me ripping crocodiles Rip and alligators. And <laughs> ripping and tearing and biting and smashing. Are you okay? Yeah, thanks. Yeah, sorry, man. I just got really worried about you. I appreciate you helping, because that crocodile was eating me alive. <laughs> was that a new spell that I cast? I don't know. I think so. Cool. You became a, an ape. Did you guys become apes? No. Nope. Was that the trap? <laughs> I became a wet cat. <laughs> cool. Not fun. I, became, I became dinner. Well, then, I'll just <laughs> store that in my back pocket for yeah, later. Just remember how that felt. And channel that. You're, I still picture you're like laying there, like just. <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah. just talking, like mo not moving. There's still a part of a crocodile kind of on me. Like its jaw. Yeah. Can like you just help the, me get the, this jaw? <laughs> yeah. If anyone wants to just move that jaw, it's like right into my. Oh, there we go. That's you, better. So do you want to? Um, do I can do a rope trick and we can. That'd uh, be great. Rest. Do short rest. Okay. Yeah. So Veo casts rope trick and you all hide up into your little hidey hole to take a one hour short rest. Uh, before we delve into the ruins again, a big thank you to Axe and Shield for providing us with the awesome gaming accessories. You guys have seen the initiative tracker and we also use his flight stands. He has many other cool things available on his website. So check it out. Also, uh, if you've been listening to the stream, you're gonna hear tabletop audio. Uh, they've been uh, playing our ambient music and our lovely background are uh, creating the, the drama and the scenery, check it out at Tabletop Audio. Uh, it's free. It's great. And finally, thanks to 100 Years Boar for the amazing narration in our introduction video. Uh, check them out streaming here on Twitch. If you're enjoying the stream and want to help support our work, check out our Patreon. You can find it by following the links below or at patreon.com slash, or yeah, patreon.com slash dungeon underscore dudes. Sometimes we use the underscore, sometimes we don't. It's yeah. always, it's hard to remember which one's which. We have a phenomenal Discord community exclusively for our patrons where you can discuss role-playing games, the latest episode of our show, or just have fun talking with us about your favorite geeky, geeky topics. So it's, it's a lot of fun. So you, if you are interested in getting more from us, just chatting with us in general more often, check out our Patreon. Uh, tonight's episode of Dungeons of Drakenheim is also sponsored by Skull Splitter Dice. Uh, they've sent us a fantastic collection of their premium metal dice to use at the game tonight. Jill, what dice are you using? I've got like a gunmetal matte gray kind of stony with golden lettering. It's up and down. You know, it's a good, good equal dice. They didn't do that well for you in the last battle. I like the tin. This yeah. one with the thieves tools on the back has a bunch of daggers. And, and it, it says, says plan B. Plan B. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you'd like to get a, so a set of dice for yourself now, head on over to SkullSplitterDice.com. Be sure to use the discount code DDUDES at checkout to save 15% on your first order. With that, let's return to the ruins. We are underneath the city of Drakenheim, where our heroes have followed the path of the what, what is known as the Queen's Passage, the old smuggler tunnels that run beneath the spokes of Drakenheim that allegedly are filled with traps and crocodiles, although several fewer crocodiles now. And may lead to the stronghold of the Queen of Thieves. Our heroes have been brut brutally beaten down after a confrontation with several crocs. And have headed up into Veo's rope trick to recuperate. Mm -hmm. Now as the hour passes, you drop out of the rope trick and are still in the cistern. Uh, much quieter than it was before. As the carcasses of the crocodiles float further downstream. So you're going to mage hand the one across for the... Right, back to the first plan. <laughs> we're going to pull... Back to the levers. We're going to pull all three at once, and I'm not stepping past this point. <laughs> and <laughs> it's like you're almost about to step, and Bear Pluto's like, Sebastian, no! No, stop! <laughs> oh, this happened last time. I'm also uh, not human anymore. <laughs> Oh, yeah. At so some point, the oh, spell yeah. wore off, and I'm like, back to normal. It's when oh, you hey, fell in the up. water. You, you, <laughs> oh, when you I lost splashed in the water. I came out of the water as a cat again. <laughs> Tabaxi. Yes, definitely. 
Pluto, can you make your way to the other lever without step it, stepping on any... Uh... Be very careful. Yeah, I'm, uh, I was thinking, like, let's mark them. Can we mark them with something? Can you, like, mark them with magic? Can I use mold earth to put, like, don't step here on... <laughs> I go yeah, around? Yeah, like, just, like, in gravel? <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. Yeah, mold like earth, a big, I can put... A big I circle put, with the line through it? Yeah, like I the... put circles with lines through it on the squares not to step on. <laughs> okay, so you're going to mage hand that one. Yeah. I'm going to be the one closest to us. Okay. Oh, no. Wait, like, so we still don't know what they all do. Like, Do we do them like one, two, three, and like see what each of their reactions are, or do we do them all at once? So we do them the all fun once. part about all at once is that we do it all at once. Are there any inscriptions anywhere? Does anybody see any inscriptions above their <laughs> levers? I look at my lever and see if there's any. There, there's the evidence that there was a instructional plate or plaque of some kind, which has been deliberately removed. <laughs> removed. Uh. Is one of the levers look mm. like they've never been pulled? Well, you're looking at one of your levers right now. Does it look like it's hmm. commonly pulled? Does it have wear like on the handle, or is it just like cool? Make an investigation check. Five. <laughs> <laughs> you got no idea. Well, it's gonna feel it now. Yeah. I'm gonna hold the lever and I'm gonna let's time it. We're going same time. Okay. All right. Three, um, two, one. Okay. You pull all the levers down simultaneously, and there is a creaking noise as all of a sudden <laughs> <laughs> another nozzle. <laughs> The wall on the opposite side from Veo opens up, and a crossbow <laughs> flops down and fires at Veo. <laughs> no, Veo! Uh, getting a um, a twenty to hit Veo. Yep. <laughs> Veo, you take four. Uh, you take um, six points of piercing damage, and give me a Constitution saving throw. Oh no! What if it's got the stuff? Twenty-three. Okay, you succeed, so you only take six points of poison damage and are not poisoned for one hour. Oh, jeez. <laughs> I look over to you guys, I'm like, I hate this Where room. does it hit you? Because you got your back to it, so you yeah, pull it, it and it turns it back. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, son of a... Yeah. <laughs> and uh, with all the levers pulled, you see the, the two oh, doors, God. they r kind of rise up and then slam back down again. With all the levers in the down position. So the doors just only opened a bit and then closed? Yep. Like, they were going to go up and then slam right down. So do we do all of them but the arrow one? Well, you you looked at yours and you couldn't tell if it was worn. Yeah. I want to look at mine and see if it was also worn. Cool. Make a perception check. 21. You see now where you're standing... There are several old blood stains <laughs> in front of this lever, and the clear evidence that like people have been shot in the back, fallen over, and Crocs have come up and dragged them into the water. <laughs> <laughs> it's a system, and it works. The system works. Yeah, like it probably hasn't happened for a while, but but now looking at it, like looking at the stains on the floor, it's very obvious <laughs> what. What happens here on a you regular? You CSI day? it, and you're like, "Oh, uh, you do like you have the recreation in your I head." Get it? Yeah. <laughs> I take my lever and I put it down. All right, I put it up. You you put the lever back up. Okay. Yeah. Does, Does the happen? crossbow go away? Uh, the crossbow go goes away when her lever goes back up. So we're not pulling that one anymore. I I pull. I walk away from it. I pull my lever again. Uh, you, it's da in the down position. Oh, I put it up. You put it back up. Okay. With your lever up, uh, and the other lever down, um, what happens is the door beside Paluto opens up. Switch? Yeah. We switch. The door beside you two opens up. Wait a second. 
I have an idea. I mold earth and pile some rock uh, just because the door opens up and down, mm -hmm. right? I pile some rock here so that we could still fit through, but it would be high enough to wedge the door open. There's no, like, loose stone. Like there, I mean, you could get some of the wooden de debris, but, like, unworked stone is not present. Yeah, we There's can just flip the switches. Stuff, I was just trying to come up with a fun solution for both doors to be open. Well, I like where your head's at. Um, Which door do you want to go through first? As the professional navigator, I that, say... No, that's we, not you. Oh. <laughs> Stop! Stop saying! It. Stop! Thank God, because I had no idea. I was I was just gonna make a like fifty fifty choice here. Well, Vam. Yeah. No. <laughs> You've got well, a classic. Uh, you know these sewers. One door, nope. or the other scenario. Yeah, I mean this one's open right now. <laughs> <laughs> what a navigator! So, uh, I would <clears throat> say maybe that way. Okay. We, you know what? Our navigators never led us astray. Rat food never led us astray. <laughs> <laughs> no, Rad Radford led us astray. Oh. This new navigator. <laughs> Just Veo. Mm, Veo's yeah. never led us astray. Radford was good for like one mission. What about the time she like told us to run across the street as fast <laughs> as we could and we ended up in didn't. a situation with Knowles? <laughs> yeah, we, we... You hesitated. Yeah, we probably didn't run fast enough. <laughs> Maybe you just overestimate our ability to follow orders. <laughs> <laughs> I do navigate based on my own ability, so... Mm. Yeah, there's an yeah. expectation. <laughs> um, Pluto. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to step over the, or I do, I do a little yep. skip. Yep. Uh, what's through this door? <sighs> Whatever it is, it's going to die. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I'm really mad. There's, <laughs> there's like bite marks in my armor. I'm going to keep some of the teeth as like a, as a trophy. Nice. Okay. Uh, I'm going to walk through the door. Okay. You walk through the door into... A dry, dusty hallway that heads back some 30 feet before veering both to the north and south, but not on a perfect T intersection. Like, it's disjointed in its, mm. in its shape. One way, the way that leads back towards the north, the, the way you came, ends in a pair of large wooden double doors that look like they probably haven't been opened in years. The other w passage ends in a staircase, which leads up upwards. Um, judging by the way the staircase is built and its sharpness of its incline, the stairs are going over top of the uh, water passage that's coming off the cistern. Mm. And I say, Bluto, hold on a sec. Yep. You said it's dusty, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, I take a look at the floor and I want to see if there's any footprints or anything going through the dust that have been here that I can tell. Good thinking. Um, give me an investigation check. 15. Looking around, it does not appear that anyone has come this way in quite some time. I say we... If, if this was the way that they came to go to the Queen, they said there are men that come through here often. I don't think this is the way. Yeah, but we could also uh, just take a quick look around. I say, and I step through the door as well. I I agree with you. We shouldn't go this way, but why not? Well, I mean, we're following. We're trying to follow the path that the uh, yeah. The men. We need to find. Um, but I mean, I see a pair of double doors that might be fun to open. It could be more traps. True. I didn't think of that. <laughs> <laughs> I was like... <laughs> I just like opening doors. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, okay, we can go back. We can always keep in mind that this is something we can come to later, too. If we lose our way, if we don't go the right way, we can always come back. Do you want to go upstairs or uh, go check out the other doors? I say check out, I say check out the other doors. Okay. I'd like to see if there's like... Uh, Investigate for... Yeah, yeah, just see if there's been people walking yeah, this Yeah, because if they're coming every day or every other couple of days... Or even, like, this amount of dust has probably been a little bit more than just a couple weeks when people haven't come by. No, smart. Yeah, so let's go back. We'll do the, the old reverse. Don't step on the... <laughs> we have the markings. <laughs> okay, you reverse the doors. Looking through them, this is a short, straight passage that has a T-shaped intersection to it. 
directly ahead of you is a wall that looks like of almost completely different construction. So the room directly across from you um, is a rough um, basement across on the other side of this grate. Uh, and you can see a staircase leading upwards. Um, and there's several stacked crates, barrels, and other accoutrements filling the room across from you. The hallway connecting this room to the cistern veers off to the south bull as well. So there's a, a T-shaped hallway that goes to the south. And I step forward to, again, kind of look at the floor and see if there's any patterns, if there's any dust here that shows there's been people walking through. Cool. Give me a perception check. Ten. Ten? The hallway doesn't look quite as dusty as the other one, but whether or not that means that just it, there, it's more sealed off or it has frequent foot traffic, you can't tell. Mm. I mean, this at least doesn't look as old and dusty as the other one, but... Why don't you take the left wall? I'll take the right wall. And we'll kind of just kind of work our way down okay. yeah. the hallway. Slowly. Just and I'll walk down the middle. <laughs> for nozzles and checking for uh, raised um, <laughs> stones. Okay. All right, so we start to walk down the hall. You slowly move down the hallway to the T intersection. The intersection m- goes to the south before ending abruptly in a solid wall. Hmm. And across from you is a uh is a gate it's a barred gate and you can see that this small bit of masonry that goes between here is transitional like someone's carved it out so there's rough stone as if so the the room across from you might be the basement or a cellar of another building above ground and this little bit has been broken through and then a gate a, a portcullis style gate has been put through it to block it off. And and the south passage just goes to a wall. Yes. And so how how far down? 30 feet. So it's just 30 feet and then just a wall. Just a wall. So suspicious. Um maybe it's not just a wall. Maybe it's more than a wall. I sing it. I look down the hallway and before I go down it, I check for gelatinous cubes. <laughs> Yeah, is it super clean? Is yeah, the like, ground super clean? No, the ground is actually dusty. And looking around, um, <laughs> you can see now that there looks to be a fair amount of foot traffic. But then the foot traffic heads from this gate down this hallway. And then the foot traffic, of, like the bits of disturbed dust, abruptly end Secrets. about 10 feet down the hallway. Uh, in the last like 10 15 feet of the hallway why don't you use your mage hand and just like punch through it just, like, i don't think my mage hand is strong enough. And just like see if it'll like i i walk to the end of the footprints okay and i examine the ground around that area <clears throat> so you're standing at the edge of the footprints and the ground below there's a notice there's still dust there in fact the dust is thicker after the footprints stop I look above me solid wall solid ceiling up there I check the walls I start like pushing up against walls I go on the other side of you being like what are we doing as I'm miming the wall <laughs> You push against the walls. They are cold to the touch. You keep keep uh, keep walking, or use your mage hand and like make it go where the footsteps can. I think I know what's happening here. I walk confidently into the wall. <laughs> Which wall? The one straight ahead of me. Towards towards you. Okay. Do you step forward, put your foot down, 
and your foot stops about six inches above the ground. I continue to walk confidently upwards on these invisible <laughs> stairs. Yeah, it's an invisible staircase. I I'm watching Sebastian <laughs> levitate into the air, <laughs> and I'm freaking out, man. Yeah, I'm just like, how are you doing this? Are actually, you? Wait. Is this more magic that's happening to you, like the ape? Yeah, I, I don't I, actually know, but I, <laughs> I, I, I think. So you've walked up the stairs. Yeah. And now your head's almost at the ceiling. I continue to you walk. Confidently. Watch as Sebastian's head goes through the ceiling. Ah! Well, we lost a. Or we need another sorcerer. <laughs> Wait, I saw you turn into an ape. Yeah, I think you levitating and then your head disappearing is probably like it's normal. <laughs> this is this is normal stuff now. In all my time at Dragon Time, I've never seen someone's head just disappear like that. <laughs> no, his his head is going through the wall, and he's just you see his torso. <laughs> I, so the torso turns back around, and and I yell down, "You guys coming?" Oh, you're. Oh, okay. I'm coming. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. yeah, I feel more confident now. And I'm like feeling um, on all fours. I'm kind of going up these stairs because <laughs> so I'm very unsure. As you, as you come up through, through the, no sure the illusory wall, you can see that there it ends very cl- quickly in a wooden door at the at the end. Uh, the, the the staircase basically where this at the top of the stairs there's this wooden door that would be right there. I listen into the wooden door. Ooh, need a perception check. A perception check. Perception. I get a seven. It's quiet. (laughs) It's quiet, too. Do you hear the door? I hear wood (laughs) and stone and possibly mischief, but that might be my imagination. Pluto, is that you? Uh, Sorry. You guys still have your disguises, right? I'm wearing a bandana. I'm Other also that, wearing. I look pretty okay. normal. I pull my hood up a little bit tighter on my face and my bandana over my mouth. Be like, okay, we're seeing Queensman. Like, let's go through. I'm gonna put my face mask down. <laughs> I put my goggles on. <laughs> yeah, this is our right, disguise is complete, and I'm now Clark Kent. I still have like cat claws and stuff, or whatever. Oh no, my ears! Oh, no. <laughs> oh my god, you're a monster! <laughs> the goggles—they do nothing. The ears were disguised all along. <gasps> I don't even know you. You're a human disguised as an elf, disguised as a as a thief right. that also okay. sometimes becomes a. So man you head with up no the hair. stairs. Oh god. Yes. <laughs> okay. Oh boy. So you are all at the top of the stairs in front of this doorway. I try to open the... Oh, wait, this is going to be bad. <laughs> no, no, go, go, go. Like, go how how all... close are we to the door? There's a small landing at the top of the stairs after the doorway. And looking behind you, mm-hmm. it just looks like floor. I I like kind of put my hands out to these guys and I kind of I back us up a little bit till we're like on the steps and then I mage hand open the door okay you mage hand open the door and it opens into a large rectangular room and as the door flies open you hear the Thwack, thwack, thwack of several crossbows being fired at at the door swinging open. Because in this room are a pair of large tables that have been overturned, and then there are a pair. Uh, then there are a group of hooded figures holding crossbows behind tables that have all fired them at you as you open the door. I'm gonna have you all roll for initiative, and if you could help me for one moment while we just slide around Ooh. so you can access the battlefield. I'm so seconds. good on initiative. Oh, I'm rolling terrible.
Thank you very much for watching our set change. <laughs> We will now play the Drakenheim theme. Drakenheim theme song. <laughs> that was it. <laughs> Just that. <laughs> I thought you were going to sing the song from the intro video. <laughs> I, I can't remember. <laughs> That's close that like nailed it. it. You nailed it. Nailed it. Um, don't forget the camera. Camera. Epic. Oh, we're way over there. Monty, we're way over there. Yeah, Monty, last thing. Minis. We're just getting ready to die. <laughs> Please stay tuned. Will our heroes be able to survive three bolts from crossbows? I already got one in the back. <laughs> Find out next time. Right now. <laughs> okay. What's uh what's Pluto Jackson's favorite color? Um blue. Okay, if you can put those that makes three sense. at the door at the door. And if you can put these four behind there, and if you put them all behind the, the tables there, great. Your head was in the right place. Uh, maybe we should have like stayed in the illusionary stairs and opened the door. Hindsight, 2020. I wonder if we were supposed to knock anyway. <laughs> oh yeah. Oops. We're new here. Yeah, we're we're new to the club. We didn't know the secret. Oh yeah, we all rolled initiative. Mm hmm. Oh. Yeah, I'm really, really glad I got advantage on that. I uh, I'm going last all night. That's what's happening. My last initiative, I rolled a crit twenty. I just rolled a nineteen. <laughs> Of course you did, Vaya. Cool. You got a good camera shot there, Kyle? Can I adjust it a little? Yeah, I think so. Tilt it down just a little bit. On the camera itself. Nice. Perfection. Nice. Okay. So you kick down the door, and quite suddenly, here's what you see. You see... A very hastily erected barricade has been of knocked over tables and barrels has been set up in here. And then alongside them are um, four figures. All of them are wearing black cloaks, and you can see that all of them have a motif. Of like a of a red rose somewhere on their armor or weapons. There are four of them. Two of them are tieflings. Um and all of them carry crossbows, daggers, and wear light leather armor. Their equipment is noticeably better than the other thugs that you've seen before. In terms of its quality and its uniformativity. And three of them have leveraged crossbow shots beside them and fired the uh, and fired them upon one of each of you as you each enter the room now we are back a bit and crouched at the stairs and we mage hand open the door does that give us any sort of cover or anything? yes i'm going to give you cover on your shots yeah so veo you actually get a crit <laughs> get crit Sebastian, I get a, um, you can add, you can all add five to your AC because you're crouched down. Sebastian, I get a 23 still to hit you. I cast shield. Okay. And Pluto, I get a 21. Uh, that thankfully misses. Okay. Okay. <laughs> 
Yeah. You don't have special armor. Nope. Okay. So, Veo, you're going to be taking a total of 10 points of damage from the crossbow shot. Not a very high crit. I feel like Aww. it got me like in the ear. Sebastian, oh. you got a piercing. Uh, you take six points of damage. I cast shield, though. Oh, you cast shield. Yeah. Okay, and great. That's all <laughs> I need, then, from those from all those shots. <laughs> all the crossbows okay. are finding me tonight. <laughs> and finally, um, the... Uh, as, uh, as all of this uh, rustles up, the one tiefling woman, she's got all of them have their bandanas drawn across her face, but you can just see by her eyes she she's a tiefling. You can see in in just this moment, she grabs her hands together and three duplicates of her appear out around the sides of her. And what we got for initiative? There's a million of them. Twenty five. <laughs> Twenty five for Veo. Okay. Pluto? Uh thirteen. Pluto's got a 13. And Sebastian? Four. Four. Nice. <laughs> Four. Okay. So Sebastian's going to go Dead last. last. <clears throat> As I do. Okay, here's the plan. Shoot them. That's Magic them? That's way better. <laughs> 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 yeah, let's go with your plan. We could try to reason with them. Yeah, we could just... Ah, I'm new. It's my... my I'm Try to reason on my second turn. <laughs> <laughs> with the one where you don't shoot get first, advantage. Shoot talk later, you know. <laughs> Literally shoot them all and then be like, sorry, we're new here. So, Look. <laughs> they have a meeting with destiny. You're just it's an immediate reaction. here to Okay. So Shoot the tieflings um uh the tieflings are named Lies and Deceit, and their two allies are named Soros. Uh so Sebastian's gonna go dead last. Uh and then um As I do. We got Lie and then the Soros go ahead of him. And then lies and deceit. Uh, oh, Pluto goes after all them as well. Oh, no. <laughs> so Veo is the first one to go. And then, yeah, we got deceit, we lies, and sorrows. They're fast. They're so fast. Okay. Veo, oh, okay. what are you going to do? Um, how... F how um, not invisible, but how much covered are we? You have uh, three quarters cover, basically. So kind of like our heads are poking yep. up on the stairs. Oh, that was a good shot. Um, I'm going to take a shot against the... I think they're... Uh, what are they saying? Soros? Um, one of the guys behind the barrels. Not the tiefling. <coughs> Not the tiefling. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and I take my three shots. Okay. My first turn, because... Well, you fire at me, I'm gonna fire at you, so Um Nine. It hits the wooden table in front of him. Seventeen? Um that does hit. Woo! Oh baby. Here we go. A hundred damage. Come on, a hundred. I think that's all in one turn. Well, let's let's spread it out. Let's have a hundred damage over four targets. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> That's 21 damage. <laughs> <laughs> and then my third shot. That leaves him bloodied. Crit! Okay, <laughs> <laughs> so he cannot survive a critical hit from you. So the, the so first shot, like most things. He, he recoils <laughs> back so at your first shot and steps out of cover and right into your second bolt, which hits him right, right between the eyes and he falls over dead. Nice. And then I 
sneak back underneath the stairs. <laughs> okay. Hidden. <laughs> Yoink. <laughs> okay. But I'm still like right below, so you guys are not running away. All right. So deceit. Deceit is one of the, is the tiefling male the ma- the male tiefling, and he seeing the shots and seeing one of his friends go down, he leaps forward around to the side where this this lever is, and you hear him pull it, and all of a sudden there is a screeching noise coming from the staircase, as the sound of a portcullis is closing across the illusory floor. Oh. So you have a choice. So, Vea, you've already ducked back down. Two of you have a choice whether you want to go up or down again. Vea's down, though. Vea's down. What? It, so Sebastian goes? I, I jump up at the You're going to jump portcullis. forward? I jump forward. Okay, the two of you can make dexterity saving throws. 11. 20. 11 and 20. Sebastian, you succeed. Pluto, you do not. And you do manage to pull yourself up and forward, but as the you can feel that sliding through the illusion are these spear points that are coming and they close Ow. the illusory door shut. Uh, and you take a total of uh, 14 points of damage. Oh. Uh, Ow, my legs. And now there, it is a floor. <laughs> And it is a it is a ceiling. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Guys, don't worry. Vera said she'd be she's not she's not leaving. She's just gonna be right back. Yeah, she's right there. Yeah, she'll be fine. She'll okay. <laughs> <laughs> is she not? What happened? Right. What happened? With that, see. lies. Her eyes turn inky black, and she begins circling her hand in a wide circle, forming a, a coiling spiral of magical energy and casts hypnotic pattern. No! I hold out my hand, or no, I pull out my wand, and I point it at her, and I go, no! And a beam comes out of my wand and tries to counterspell okay. her hypnotic Ooh. pattern. So that matches the spells evenly, so her hypnotic pattern is counterspelled. Boom! I twirl the wand and slide it back into my pocket. It's not very impressive to me because okay. nothing happened. <laughs> Even though a bunch of stuff happened, I didn't see anything happen. You saw her going like this, and you saw me go, no. Go, oh, that's saw. magic? <laughs> it's just pointing at With each other and you waiting. both no prone on the ground. <laughs> Finally, uh, Soros uh, 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 Lies sees this, and she turns to the other, the other one of the two Soros, uh, and she says, uh, get over your brother and... And shut that door. And Sor- and then Soros leaps forward towards the door and slams it shut. Hey. And you hear a clink as it locks into place. You guys are stuck in that hole. Um, are we just in the closet now? <laughs> uh, can you... Pluto, you're up. It's a wooden door, right? Um, I'm going to go through the door. I'm just going to pretend like it's not there, and wherever Sora was, I'm just going to run at him. Okay. So I run into the door as hard as I can, and I'm just going to burst through it. Okay, make a strength check. Ooh, a nine. Uh, the door is very real. <laughs> <laughs> and you it's an illusion! <laughs> with, a, with a bash. Um, and, But it does not give way. Uh-oh. It's a real door. Oh no! Uh, and before it opened, right? Try again. <laughs> do you do you have more turn left? Try again. I just try to turn the handle. <laughs> it turns, but it's it, it's closed oh, from the other side. It. Um. All right. Well, what do you want to do now? <laughs> um, <laughs> well, I'm all out of ideas. <laughs> I think we're gonna need a bigger Pluto. <gasps> And, and I put my hand on Pluto's shoulder, and he starts to grow. You cast Enlarge on Pluto? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, we go to the top of the round with Veo. So I'm just at the top of the stairs. Mm-hmm. 
down here. Um, I I ready myself because I'm like, no, no, they'll get through. They'll they'll open the door, and I get my longbow ready so that way if if I I'm I'm kind of like poking it to see if the illusion is done. I'm like, ah, they'll get it, and then if the illusion comes out, I'm gonna hop up and. She realizes is that what's cu cu close across is a grate, so you can kind of like poke your fingers through, and you can hear Veo <laughs> and Pluto above. Just hear my claws against it, like. Shh, shh, shh. I oh. just let you out. Is it like when <laughs> the cat want comes under the door yeah. and you just see a hand, like? Yeah. <laughs> just. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So I'm. I'm. I have. I have faith that you'll get the door open. Yep. <laughs> That's my turn. Okay. Thanks for the vote of confidence. I appreciate that. Okay, so um, you hear some muffled. Uh, <laughs> Are we just in the closet? <laughs> you, you hear the the voice go out. Lay down your arms and surrender, and we won't kill you. Okay, we're from the purple. We're from the purple. <laughs> I'm all like <laughs> big and like <laughs> in the hallway or in the door. Uh, purple, what are we? Petals. petals, petals. We're from the purple petals. Just break down the door. This ain't your turf, pet petals. Um, yeah, we got lost. Mel sent us here. You know BJ Mel? Blackjack Mel? <laughs> Make a deception check. <laughs> Two. By the look of you, I think you were the you were those boys that uh, beat up a bunch of us in the streets a few weeks ago. Break down the door. He's on to me. Break down the door. <laughs> okay. Um, lies and sorrows pass their turns. What do you do, Pluto? Um, I use my newfound strength to open the door successfully this time. <laughs> All right, <laughs> do it to it. You get advantage on a uh, strength. Uh, twenty-three. So you kick the door off its hinges, <laughs> and it goes flying into the room, uh, colliding with Soros. Yes. Uh, make an attack roll against Soros with the door. Uh oh. What? Uh, nine. Okay, Soros manages to dive out of the way as the door goes flying off of its its hinges. Um, but as you crash forward into the room, um, just remove the door. It's total. Uh, as, <laughs> as you crash forward in, into the room, lies cast lightning bolt. Oh, <laughs> oh no. At me? At both of you. Cause you're both in a line. Oh, we're in a big line. I counter spell. Okay. A lot of, you're saying a lot of words, yeah. mage. I, I pull out my she, wand She goes again. and she fires a lightning bolt and you absorb it through the wand. Oh, cool. Cool. She looks very perturbed. Can't do much. Gonna need a Okay. Was it my action to kick the door in? Uh, it was your action, Okay. Yeah. That was her ready to action for okay. when the door opened. Wait, would you like to move or do anything else, Pluto? Uh, I run into the room and I'm gonna like I'm gonna get after kicking the door. I just run right up to uh, um, the guy that put the cool the thing on me or that closed the door. Sebastian, you're up. Um, so I run into the room as well, and I'm going to hold out my ring of spell storing and put a little <laughs> force bubble over the over uh, deceit okay alrighty yes that happens so you create a wall a domed wall of force over over deceit which or, is the sorry, or lies. lies over lies okay put it over lies nice boop, boop. and I'm like you're staying there I have questions for you okay um, and that was anything so cool. else? Um, I'm actually going to. 
Let's see. That was my... Can I quicken a spell stored ring? You you are casting the spell, so I'm going to allow this. I mean, either way, I think I'm just going to do a cantrip afterwards. Okay. So one sure. of them's quick and one of them's... Uh, I'm just going to... We'll double check. I think it's the same thing as we, we found yeah. out with the scrolls, yeah, is that you can, because you're casting a spell. It counts as yeah. casting a spell. Yeah, I'm fine with that. Okay. Um, so I'm going to I'm gonna firebolt uh, Soros. Okay. Uh, yeah. That is an 18. That hits. So a beam of fire flies out and hits him in the face. Oh, that's 2d10, not 2d8. Doing nine damage. Nice. Very well done. Okay. Uh, we go to the top of the round with Veo, who's still locked out. <laughs> My meowing's getting louder. You know when you don't let a cat into the room and they just get I more obnoxious? Not <laughs> You'll get it! Right! <laughs> still waiting. <laughs> okay. So, we go to Deceit. He says, so, this is how it's going to be then, eh? Fine. And he, um, he, uh, loops around, um, to using, uh, his movement. He squeezes between the two of you, behind you, yep. Um, and Soros finds his footing. And as you drive your blade down in, into one of the two Soros, um, Deceit kind of tactical rolls behind you. Pluto takes out one of, his, uh, one of his blades and drives them down your back, making three attacks. Ow. Getting a 20 to hit, a 21 and a 20. Those all hit. Okay, so the Ow. three weapon attacks, ooh, each deal uh, 10, 26 points of piercing damage across the three attacks. Okay. And then another 14 damage and sneak attack for 40 damage total. Ooh. Ow. I'm real bloodied again. <laughs> Um, and then he, uh, and then Soros, uh, Soros follows through, and as he drives the blades out of your back, he pushes you towards Soros, who knifes you in the gut. Hey! Uh, but Soros only gets a 10 to hit and doesn't penetrate through your armor. And then I stab him with repost. Okay. Uh, 15. That hits. Or 17 damage. Um, coming forward, you bring your blade down on his skull, and it caves in. <laughs> stop it. Stop. Everyone stop stabbing me for like a second. <laughs> Ow. Okay. And next we go to Paluto. It's your turn. Uh, is pulling a lever an action? Uh, it's your interaction. So I'm going to just start wailing. I'm going to just turn around and I just glare at <laughs> at Lies mm -hmm. after he stabbed me a bunch of times. And Wait, then I just start... Is that Deceit or Lies? That's Deceit. Yeah. Sorry, Deceit. You, everybody, everybody just stop stabbing me and moving around. And I start wailing on him. And I crit him. <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> I do... Uh, 20 damage. And then I'm also going to uh, um, distracting strike him. So he takes another three. Okay. And then uh, I'm going to hit him again. And, oh yeah, I hit him. For another 13 damage. Ugh. And then I'm going to slam him with my shield into the wall. Uh... Getting a 13. Yeah. You slam him back. And then uh, and I go, stop it. And I'm going to run over and pull the lever. Nice. Because you pushed him away. Yeah. And you pull the lever. Ugh. And it sli and then it slides open as well as the other two portcullises along the side here. 
slide open as well. There you hear it, shing, slide open. And then how much movement did I use? How much, How far did I move there, uh, old Sebastian? Uh, one, five, ten, fifteen. yeah. And I'm going to run back over to you. Cool. Alrighty. Uh. Oh, and I'm going to heal myself. Because that hurt. Sebastian, you're up. Uh, second one. Oh, boy. Running, running low on juice here. Um, I'm going to just throw a firebolt at um, Deceit. Okay, he's right beside you, so you do have disadvantage. He was pushed away. Oh, yeah, he was. Yeah. And you have advantage because I distracted him. Nice. I'm going, hey, look at me. Oh, that turned you're... completely the other way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there we go. So with advantage. Hey, look at me, look at me, look at me. And I get to re-roll one of those because Elven Accuracy. That doesn't make it better. but um, So I get a 27 to hit. <laughs> you're like, that doesn't make it better when you still get a 27. <laughs> okay, that hits. <laughs> And so I, bl I blast him in the face with a firebolt, uh, doing uh, 10 damage. That leaves him bloodied. Nice. Okay, top of the round with Veo. Quick question, what is the lighting like in here? There's torchlight illuminating this room. In the hallway too? Uh, in the hallway was only lit by whatever light that you had. Okay. So I raise up. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Oh, and I'm like ready for this. I'm like, thank you. <laughs> I take my. I have released <laughs> the the veil. <laughs> <laughs> I take my bow out and uh, shoot him in the back. Oh man. <laughs> oh yeah. What we do it as you know, queen of fishes. Nineteen to hit. That hits. Oh yes, veil, please. He stabbed me in the back so many times. I don't get my sneak attack. 18 damage. Oh. And Are you not invisible in the darkness? Well, that, yeah, that's what I was asking. So, okay. So I think he still knows I'm there. Fair, yeah. yeah. yeah that's and fair. also the illusionary wall is still there, so she would need to come up through the wall mm -hmm. to see him. Yeah. But I raise up out of the wall. That's sneaky shadow. And second shot. 23. Cool. Also a hit. Oh. <laughs> Veo. 18 damage. Wow. Just start pelting him in the back. With he is still alive. <laughs> and then I sneak back down. But <laughs> because... they're extremely wounded. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. So I go back down almost like a... Okay, <laughs> with that, he collapses to his knees and says, Please don't kill me. We surrender. We surrender. I'm going to walk up and pick him up by his throat and just raise him off the ground. And I don't know what should I say. You say I. I actually turn him to you. <laughs> I, I pick him up and I just turn him to you. and go. You can interrogate him now. Where's the queen? She's she's on the other uh, other end of these passages. Which direction? There's two ways you could go. Back up that way. She's also got an office down on the other side. Has a man by the name of Oscar Yorn come through here anytime soon? Don't know anyone by that name. Oh. Hmm. I pop my head up in the floor, like, only so you see my head. I'm like, did we win? <laughs> yeah, I think you can come up now. I hop up the steps. How long does the by. cage last? That's a great question, I... Don't know what that spell does. I just put it around her. Because she might be... What is it? Sebastian doesn't understand it's magic force, other than his. And it lasts 10 minutes. Um, so this is... Uh, who am I holding on to? Deceit. Deceit. Deceit and lies. Um, deceit. Either you get Holy to live... Away, you can pull off like his, his face masks. Uh, and he is a, uh, a blue-skinned tiefling man with short buzzed hair um, and um, his horns kind of shoot up in a spiral like straight up and he had a, he had a, a scowl over his face which underneath uh, is 
um, very like sharp and well defined features, but almost facial features that are too sharp. Like the angles on his face are almost just like perfect angles, not like rounded, soft features. What did you say your name was? I go by deceit. For some reason, that doesn't make me want to trust you. Yeah. What? What's your friend's here's name? She's lies. Oh, well, that doesn't work. <laughs> <sighs> are they even? Are, what if they're not telling the truth about their names? Can we even trust that? Complicated. Not gonna give a give you our real names. Not a chance. That's fine. Do you know? We can the tell queen? you other things. Do you know the queen personally? Yes. We do. She assigned us to watch this passage. Were you keep, waiting? Keep for all us? our traps wor- working. Were you waiting for us? We uh, heard you yelling, and <laughs> we're prepared. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> oh. Yeah, there were some alligators. Were the Were the ones that keep the traps in this area well maintained? They they worked really well. <laughs> Good. Glad to hear it. Um. Also, I, I think I'm going to need that. And I go up to uh, the symbol that he has of the red rose and I take it off. I'm like, just in case. Not going to do you much good. That's fine. Queen of Thieves knows everyone's faces. That's fine. It's to fool your lesser <laughs> intelligent <gasps> Wait, what if band you members. disguise yourself as him? Yeah, I could do that. <laughs> if I... Let's take a minute to memorize his face. Can we take like a several hour (laughs) break? Lies says, you think you're going to trick the Queen of Thieves with with low level illusions like that? You don't even know who you're dealing with. You don't know who you're dealing with. That might be true, but I know that you're out of your league down here. Clearly so far as the leagues have gone, we're the best league. We're the major league. Yeah, we're the national league. Pro stars. We're the pro stars. Yeah. We're. <laughs> I, I'm big still, right? You might be pros. Oh, yeah, you are still big. I think that only lasts a minute, so you're. Probably I mean, you guys are big. pros in the. Uh, yeah, but can you make it in the playoffs? Oh man. We don't buckle under that's pressure. That's what coach. That's what coach always says. <laughs> Need more hustle. Well, well, I think we only need one of them alive. Yeah, so cool. to see who's it going to be, you or Lies. There's no need to kill us. You've already killed our, our two friends. Well, what good are you to us alive? What do you want here? We just want to see the queen. <laughs> yeah, we just want audience with the queen. Um, we're looking for Oscar Yorn. Well, and you we could have asked to... nicely instead of shooting our faces off. We opened the door and you shot at you, us. Yeah. So, I mean, um... You're not supposed to be here. If you wanted to meet with the queen, you could have joined up, gone through the normal channels, arranged a meeting, but instead you barged in uninvited. Well, no, we asked and we were told to go this way. We also kind of got like partial channels through winning the fight. Yeah, we won a fight. The guy who, who put us in the fight said, yeah, mm. just go down that so passage. So you're impatient. The queen's busy. So are we. Yeah, we have... We have uh we have a schedule. <laughs> well, if you've got urgent matters, there's two ways you can go from here. Up that way, you can drink to her honor, and that'll lead you safely through her passages, and then you can see how much further you can get from there. Or, if you want to meet with her right now, you can head down to her office, have a chat with her, but you won't be able to get anywhere close to her. Why not? She's in her office, but she's not there. I say Your we words are confusing. Hmm. I say we bring him along with us. Yeah. So that way Deceitful. we know he's not deceiving us with his lies. <laughs> uh, I'm going to disarm him. Okay. I'm going to pat him down and take away all his weapons, all his stabby tools. I assume it's it's comical about how many knives he has. Yes, it's ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> like I just keep finding yeah, new ones just and keep, shaking. How and do you <laughs> keep that between your toes? <laughs> and uh, and just throwing them in different corners of the room and down the stairs and stuff. Can I ask um, Lies to 
remove her spell casting focus. Does she have one? Uh, she she does. She has a crystal orb. If you're taking it, you're taking it. Listen, they they both say. We might be called deceit and lies, but we're not interested in dying like those two sorrows over there. Oh. Seems like it was a sorrowful occasion for them. I also, I I mean, I know what it's like to survive in this city. You kind of got to take your fights as you can get them, right? So it makes sense that you don't want to die. I can respect that. If we leave you alive and you try to backstab us, Veo will kill you. It's true. Yeah, what do we do with I also guys? ripped an alligator in half earlier, so... Mm, That's just, horrifying. Just saying. Okay. Uh, we can uh, take the battle cam out. We need, a, we need a huddle. We need a plan. Okay. Because now we have to decide, do we continue down this road, go to her office and talk to her, which I assume is like, maybe it's like an illusion, yeah. or we'll get there and... It's like not her. It's like maybe it's like her, like a herald. Simulacrum. Yeah. Or and then we go to this other place and we drink something which might be like poison, and we have to go further. I have a heavy constitution. Why we don't can, we? I've eaten lots and drinking lots of things in Drakenheim. I can handle a little bit of drink in the Queen's honor. Why don't we get um deceit to come with us, like as our guide? Yeah. 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 What about lies? What do we do with her? Yeah. Can we lock her downstairs? Hmm. Yeah, do we have any... Uh, when was the last time we passed a prison? I mean, I have a bunch of rope. We could just tie her up. Yeah, that's true. How often do people come to change places with you guys? Once every couple of days, but we're the main ones. We've earned our keep here because we can... Uh, we can go through as we want to. You won't be able to, though. Why? You have to drink in the Queen's honor. Okay, then we'll do that. What but does that mean, though? Lies. We'll show you. It's just this way if you want to see it. Lies, ah. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tie up Lies, and I'm just going to leave her in the corner <laughs> of this room. Put um, a barrel of her. No, I want her to be found, oh. but I just don't want her to go running off right now. So, like, in a few days when somebody comes to check... They'll find her. She'll live. Okay. Makes sense. But that will teach you a lesson for shooting bolts without asking, without questions. asking questions. Yeah, and you're spinning your hands and your eyes went all weird for a second. <laughs> By the way, you fire bolts and don't ask questions all the time, but I don't know. I'm okay with it when you do it. <laughs> They're not coming at us. Yeah. As long as the bolts are coming away from us and not <laughs> at us, I'm happy. So the other yeah. thought thing I thought was we could just put a certain box in this room and just sort of leave I think we want to talk to the queen we just like walk there. and we just walk away and we just we just do a cool slow motion why don't we present it to the queen as a gift <laughs> <laughs> well, what if she's as smart as she is she might be able to true we don't want to hand it to her yeah no let's see, <laughs> let's see who the queen is and we'll see if we can get to her and then we'll We'll go from there. So which way do you want to go? Do you want to go tr drink to her honor or go visit her? I will drink to her honor. I'll drink to her honor. Let's go drink. Deceit, lead the way. They lead you through. They smile. They lead oh, you through. Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Did we see the smile? Yeah. Uh, oh, no. I tied lies up, though, didn't I? Okay, so you tied yeah. lies up and deceit is bringing you. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And we take her orb. And okay. I go, you get this back when I get back. So they bring you around the corner to a smaller room that uh, looks like a small tap room. And around the corner, there is a small bar with a statue of a bartender behind the bar. And the statue is able to move very slightly, like as if there's gears moving it around. And in front and behind it, there's several bottles of various drinks. And um, Deceit says, he points down the hallway, and you can see in front of you, there is a archway leading down the hall, and it is filled with a thick, 
green gas. Deceit says, The great queen bids all who would pass drink in her name. And you can see in front of you, at the bar, there is a bottle of red wine, a cask of yellow mead, a can of white milk, and a pot of black coffee. And there are several drinking cups. And Deceit says, I can walk through that because I'm immune to the poison. I've built up an, immu an, an immunity over the years. But you are going to need to drink the antidote. If you want to find out what it is, ask the barman. I have a question. Do you know what it is? I don't. What's your question? Through that poison is a hallway, correct? Yep. How far is the hallway? Till the poison stops. I don't know. But you've yeah, been you do. through you've it. You've been through it. I have been through it. But I was chosen to protect this place because I don't know that information. Cute. So all of us that are here to protect it, the Queen of Thieves picked us because we don't know the answer. But when you walk down it, how long are you walking for? I couldn't tell you that. Could okay, magic. but then... We're just gonna murder you because you have you're useless. Well, What's he, gonna keep you alive? You gotta you gotta give us like you, you gotta give us, us to talk to the barman. Let's go up to the barman. That's a little bit of information, I guess. I mean, we might have stumbled upon that. I walk up to the barman, and I ask, "Barman, what's the antidote?" The barman speaks. Why wow, the great king bids all who would pass safely drink in her true name. The drink is a drink more pure than water and one more deadly than poison. When you finish your drink, it fills your cup, but you'll die if it's all you have to drink. Behind him, the only drink the only are a bottle of red wine, a cask of yellow mead, a can of white milk, and a pot of black coffee. And there are several drinking cups. And is the, are they like open containers? Like is 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 everything just like sitting out? Like it's been sitting mm -hmm. out for. Uh, they all appear to be fresh. I I turn to deceit one more time and I say, um. Is there like a concoction we need to make, or is it just one of these? I think it's, I think. You just have to. Uh, gonna have to figure out I really don't know I've heard the the riddle a bunch of times but I couldn't tell you the answer hmm. what if we send him through the gas because he's immune and we just make him like go open the door or I don't know I just I can't have any more wine <laughs> I can because <laughs> so so can Bar you can you read the yeah the Barman, one more time? What is the riddle? The great queen bids all who would pass safely drink to her true name. It's a drink more pure than water and more deadly than poison. When you finish a drink, it fills your cup, but you'll die if it's all you have to drink. And behind him is a bottle of red wine, a cask of yellow mead a can of white milk, and a pot of black coffee. And in front of him are several drinking cups. We drink the blood of the barman. <laughs> uh, Deceit, what's the queen's name? Don't know. My 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 immediate thought is that is wine more pure than water? We could just yeah I I like the idea of making the swamp water like just 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 mix I, them I all don't together. Think that's it. That's all of it. 
Yeah, we can try it. I think a lot of reasons why I'm drinking all of these in, in only with Kelly. But what's the when you finish it, your cup is filled? Yeah. Was that one of the wines? <gasps> Ooh. What? Milk. Cause it, <laughs> why? Because it runs. Because in the glass, it like always like leaves a film. I don't know. If We're going on milk film. <laughs> I'm, I mean, I'm 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 putting you. my life on <laughs> milk. <laughs> the barman repeats. The great queen bids all who would pass safely drink in her true name. A drink more pure than water, more deadly than poison. When you finish your drink, it fills your cup, but you'll die if it's all you have to drink. Um, uh, queen are all the glasses the same? Is this like... Uh, yep. they're, all the, they're all the same. All the cups are empty. Yeah, I, I have an idea. We all drink a different one and see who makes it down the hall. <laughs> but then there'd be one left over. That's the gamble. I was thinking of like, could we teleport all the way down the hall? See, I was, I'm on board with that. But I feel like if, if it's still not far enough, um, or if there's something else going I on, I can't there, teleport. I'm you, out. You're both lost. Oh no! I, I really need a long rest before we visit the queen. Um, we could go the other way. You know what, Pluto? What's that? I believe in you. I'll take the milk. The bartender comes around, pours the milk, puts it in front of you. It might not be the milk. <laughs> 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 Only, okay, because I don't think it qualifies all of them. I think it's the, because if you just drank milk your whole life, if I would you die? If I any of these my whole life. No, I but the, well, the you... riddle, the riddle says if it's all you have. You'll die, uh, right? Is it wine? Because I think I think it's the I think it's Can the I concoction. The I think anyway? it's a cocktail of everything. I sip the milk. What You're going I... to sip the milk. No. Oh, ooh. <gasps> what if it's what if it's whatever you do, you chug whatever it is. The to... great queen bids all who would pass safely drink in her true name. A drink more pure than water and more deadly than poison. When you finish your drink, it fills your cup, but you'll die if it's all you have to drink. What if we had two drinks? <laughs> you do back to backs. I double fist. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, I bet there's like a hundred people right now who know the answer and I'm <laughs> dying. I feel like it's not any of them. I feel like it's. I think it's the bartender's blood. I'm gonna the rip off his is, arm. Is, is <laughs> stone. And bartender, what do people normally order from you? Like, what's the special? He what's the house special? Again, ah, and monstrous. points to the drinks. Be and he, as you know, he go goes around and again behind him is a bottle of red wine, a cask of yellow mead, a can of white milk pot of black coffee and several drinking cups you know what oh wait to the queen wait no nope. <laughs> okay. sebastian you drink the milk yes okay you are unconscious good <laughs> is it, it may, we don't know if he's just lactose intolerant <laughs> like maybe he just doesn't like um, <laughs> sebastian I knocks it back and he just passes completely out and slumps down to the ground i take his pulse He's yeah. alive. Okay. He's not dead. Sebastian? What if we drank the whole cask of mead? Because that's a lot. And it would, if it's the only thing I drank, I'd probably die. And the seat's with us, right? Mm -hmm. okay. He laughs. I go up to him and I shake him and I say, what happened? He says, you're, you're the first one. Uh, like, you're the first ones I've ever had to actually try this thing. So, I don't know. I guess the wrong answers are poisoned in some way. The the queen has a has an incapacitating poison. She's probably used it on him. Wrong answer, I guess. Uh, can we still do whatever we need to do with 
Sleepy Sebastian. Um, probably not. <laughs> can I? Can I, if I give a waft of the of the the cup that he drank from? Does it smell like poison? It smells like milk. If I take, I have a, a bit of salmon, mm -hmm. and, I, and you still have a, a, a bit of milk. I just rub it around. Does anything happen to it? Nope. Nothing. Okay. You have a piece of salmon. Yes. Okay. For my rations, I just want to see if like muscle or anything it happens because sometimes mm. poison can. Okay. Uh, one, one more time, Mr. Bartender, man. Okay. A ton. A ton of. The great king, queen bids all who would pass sink safely drink in her true name. A drink more pure than water and more deadly than poison. When you finish your drink, it fills your cup, but you'll die if it's all you have to drink. And behind him is a bottle of red wine, a cask of yellow mead, a can of white milk, and a pot of black coffee, and several empty drinking cups. I'm gonna try the coffee. Okay. And drink. I'm gonna take a a whole thing of the coffee. And I'm gonna say out loud <laughs> Kyle's giving me books over there. It's freaking me out. <laughs> I'm sorry, chat. <laughs> to the queen And I'm gonna chug the coffee. Veil, you see Paluto fall unconscious with a clatter on the ground. <laughs> the thing is, I feel like I might know the answer now, but I didn't know the Veil? Well, I can tell you what it's not. The coffee. <laughs> it's also not the milk. You have a 50-50 chance. <clears throat> Veil, you see... Uh, bartender, one more time. <laughs> Lower. The great queen bids all who would pass safely drink in her true name. A drink more pure than water and more deadly than poison. When you finish your drink, it fills your cup, but you'll die if it's all you have to drink. And behind him is a bottle of red wine, a cask of yellow mead, a can of white milk, and a pot of black coffee. A, a drink more dead, more pure than water and more deadly than poison. When you finish your drink, it fills your cup, but you'll die if it's all you have to drink. Maybe you want to drink the whole thing. I say just pick one. <laughs> I don't think we can all be unconscious. I mean, I mean, we can. We shouldn't, maybe but that we just can. Ends up with us being captured by the queen. That could be fun. I really should have. I really should have sat down before I drank. Like I, I was so <laughs> confident. I just fall over. <laughs> I drink the wine, and you fall unconscious. <laughs> and that is where we're going to end for the night. <laughs> oh, it was all of them. I'm telling you, it was the bartender's blood. Do you know what the answer is now? No. Was it the mead? Oh. I guess we'll have to leave that as a mystery. Oh no! Don't tell us, chat. Or Ch Kyle. Just, uh, I, 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 yeah, yeah. Kyle is just. It's, <laughs> Kyle thinks he knows the answer. <laughs> Alrighty, with that, th we end on a cliffhanger. Our whole party unconscious. What will happen next time in Drakenheim? I don't know, but it's with gonna be cool. With that guy that we almost murdered. <laughs> I hope he doesn't murder us <laughs> in our poison. And that's the end of Dungeons of Dragons. <laughs> that's a good no. run. Um, okay. Well, that wraps it up to, uh, for the evening. Thank you so much to our cast, Kelly, Jill, and Joe, uh, for playing and not getting the answer to the riddle. And a huge thank you to Kyle for working behind the scenes and keeping a straight face, even though he clearly has figured it out. <laughs> and our producer, Clayton, for keeping us all organized. Uh, 
<laughs> Thank you to Axe and Shield for generously providing us with the awesome gaming accessories like the Initiative Tracker. Uh, he makes a bunch of cool stuff, so check out Axe and Shield. Uh, also, thanks to Tabletop Audio again for the ambient music. Uh, they have all of uh, their uh, music available for free at tabletopaudio.com, so go check it out. Um, we use it all the time, and it's great. And finally, thanks to 100 Years Bors for the amazing narration during our intro video. Check them out streaming here on Twitch. Our terrain tonight was by Dwarven Forge, and we used miniatures by Hero Forge and WizKids. Tonight's episode of Dungeons of Drakenheim was sponsored by Skull Splitter Dice. We had some awesome crits tonight. There oh, were we, some yeah. good rolls. Thanks to Skull Splitter Dice. You can grab your own set of dice uh, on SkullSplitterDice.com and use the discount code DDUDES to save 15%. They feel very fair. Metal dice feel mm -hmm. very mm -hmm. fair. Yeah. 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 Um, and remember, of course, if you are enjoying the stream and want to help support our work, be sure to check out our Patreon. You can find it by following links below or at patreon.com slash dungeon underscore dudes. And we have an awesome Discord community. So if you do join our Patreon, you can actually chat with us in the Discord. Uh, we have a lot of different discussions going on there. We talk about Drakenheim. Uh, there's actually a page that we don't have access to where you can talk directly to Monty about theories of Drakenheim. <laughs> like the answer to the riddle. <laughs> <laughs> like the answer to the riddle. And we won't look, I promise. Mm -hmm. Indeed. Kelly and I also post new videos every Thursday on our YouTube channel where we cover everything Dungeons & Dragons, including advice for DMs and guides for players. You'll also find all prior episodes of the campaign available for your viewing pleasure there, too. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you next time in the Dungeons of Drakenheim. 